what's going on social media socialites so we are back and if you're watching this for the first time you're like what do you mean you're back that's because the first video <laughs> we had some technical difficulties and i erased it so you did not catch it so i gotta do the spiel all over again thank you guys so much for your participation thank you guys so much for all of my clients that are watching me live for all of my supporters that are watching me live. I appreciate you guys so much for that. So I got to go all the way through the spiel all over again. And I appreciate you guys so much for that. So this is a live lecture and also this is live business. Coaching, okay. So if you're watching this for the first time and you've never seen me before, um, you've clicked on this video because of my thumbnail or you clicked on this video because you want to know what business credit is and or you want to know what business coaching is. This is a first hand on both of those things. Okay, so if you're watching for the first time and you don't know who I am, my name is Edean Cole and I own Dean Cole Financial. We are a consulting firm and we specialize in working capital, alternative finance and business credit development. That's um, who I am. That's what I do. All right. And so make sure that you subscribe to the YouTube channel. So if you're watching this video, it's like, Dean, I wanted to watch you live. I didn't know you were live. Two things. Thing number one, you've seen one of my videos before, but you did not subscribe. Or thing number two, you did subscribe, but you did not hit that notification bell. So once again, um, for all of you guys that are watching me live, I really appreciate you so much for all the technical difficulties. I was actually trying to bring your comments live on the screen so that um, you guys, I can do some true shout outs um, for that. So I appreciate you guys for your support. So once again, if you are watching this on the replay, you have no idea what's going on. Make sure you subscribe so that you can stay in the loop. <laughs> OK, so once again, guys, this is a live lecture. This is a live video. Um, you so you see that it's live in the thumbnail. You see however long the video was when you clicked on it. So that's what this video is. Now, let me see if all our technical difficulties are finished, worked out. Let me see how I sound. I'm just steady talking. So while I bring your comments live on the screen, let's see how we're able to do. So let's see how we look in. I don't see any comments. I don't see any chat. Come on, chat. What are we looking like, chat? There we go. Come on. There we go. Comments are live on the screen. So now you can see your comments live on the screen. Now, normally I what I would do when I do my live videos, I either take your phone calls live or I will answer your comments. So I see that somebody gave me a super chat. Normally what I would do is I would answer your questions based on that super chat. But this is a special live because we hit 15,000 subscribers. Now, I know two weeks ago I just did a video like this because we hit 14,000 subscribers. And that is phenomenal. That is so cool that you guys shared the video so much that um, you shared the video so much that we hit a whole nother thousand subscribers um, in two weeks time. So I appreciate that. But every time we hit a milestone, I reward you guys. And the way that I'm rewarding you is by allowing you guys to look over my shoulder as I do business coaching. Now, like I said, if you're watching this for the first time and you don't know who I am, once again, my name is Edine Cole and I own Dean Cole Financial. We are a consulting firm and we specialize in working capital, alternative finance and business credit development. I have an online course, which is called DCFI Online, where I teach people on how they're able to start a business, how they're able to grow a business, how they're able to start um, building business credit that's separate from their personal credit and also how they're able to restore and repair their own personal credit. That's what I do. That's what I do. That's what I think. Okay. So that being said, yes, my videos are long. The reason why they're long is because I am a business professional and I don't mean that to be condescending. What I mean by that is I am a licensed business consultant. So that means that if you follow other YouTubers who might, you know, be a, you know, 18 year old kid, a 19 year old kid that's talking about business credit or credit restoration, you know, have you know they have no idea what that is. You know what I'm saying? They're not you know professional. They done read a book somewhere. They they done got half the information. They run around half cop. You know they can give out little five or ten minute videos. I can't do that because I'm held to a different standard. Not because I'm higher and you know holier than thou and higher and mighty. It's because I have actual licenses. And if you, if I were to give out wrong information, that's just like a doctor doing malpractice. 
You know, that's why that's like a, a lawyer or an attorney that um, is um, being negligent. So that's the reason why my videos are long format. I am in the process of doing what's called quick questions where I'm able to answer some of your questions quickly. However, this is a long format video. You know what I'm saying? You see what it is. It is what it is. Now, this is a live video. So this is unlike anything you've ever seen before. I want you to participate. So I am going to allow you guys to to um, to kind of come in and, <clears throat> and participate and chime in. But first, let me see how I'm signing because I'm just talking, acting like everything is all hunky dory. Let's see how I sound. Make sure I don't sound like and look like um, a robot. Sound like I'm in a kung fu flick. So let's look and see how I sound. Let's see how I sound. Everything is all hunky dory. Let's see. How it's, I a I it's a little bit kung fuish. Sound like and look like a robot. Sound like I'm in a kung fu flick. It's a little bit kung fuish. Okay. Let's see how it sounds. Okay, that's cool. So we're doing pretty good. We're doing pretty good. All right, guys. So we have a total of 52 people that are watching live. Let's see. It's a little bit kung fuish. You to hear myself. Okay. So we have a total of 52 people watching live. I want all 52 of you guys to hit that like button right now. Even if you're watching this on the replay, I want you to participate with me. I want you to make a mind muscle connection with this content. OK, like I said, this is not a cat video. This is not a twerking video. This channel is money making motivation. If you clicked on this to see eating challenges or to see prank kids, pranks and, and all the other good stuff, this ain't this place for you. Um, you know, I. I understand that a lot of African-Americans on YouTube do that. That's not what this is. OK, this is dedicated for all of my men and women that are interested in how they're able to build and repair and restore their credit. OK, so if you're like, hurry up and get to the point. The entire video is the point. Stay with me. OK, this is a live lecture. All right. So that's for all the people that are catching me on the replay. So let's go ahead and do a shout out to all the people that are watching me live. I'm trying to bring your comments on the screen, but. They, uh, you know, the, the chat is really acting up right now. I don't know why chat is really acting up right now. It's just being foolish. I don't know why it is, but let's see. Boom. There we go. OK, cool. So here we go. So we have your comments on the screen. So let's go ahead and get all the people that's participating. We have um, Terry Ann Phillips, who happens to be my beautiful fiance that's watching. Thank you, baby. She says um, good sound, cool sound. Awesome. So like I said, um, I said this on the first video, but the first video, you guys don't see that. So <laughs> I know that I'm all over the place because this is live and we have some technical difficulties, but we back up again. So every single Tuesday inside my private Facebook group, which is DCFI online, which is a special group for my clients inside that group. Every Tuesday, we do live business consulting. Now, I'm going to allow you guys to be a fly on the wall today because we hit that 15,000 mark. Um, so because we hit 15,000 subscribers, I'm rewarding you guys by allowing you to see what it's like to be inside the group, the, the group. So I'm going to answer their questions. And we do this every single um, every single Tuesday. Besides last Tuesday, because last Tuesday I announced my engagement. And um, so that's why I wanted to apologize. So if you guys look when you guys are looking over my shoulder and you're looking inside the private Facebook group, you're going to notice the date is a different date. Because, like I said, last Tuesday, I was just completely overwhelmed because we announced our engagement. So thank you so much for that. All right. So um, we have um, Brian is in the building. Hey, Brian, how are you doing today? So if you guys can hear me. OK, so let's do a temperature check. All right. Let's set the tone and do a temperature check. If you can hear me. OK, I want you to say hear you. All right. If you can hear me OK and if you're ready to go and you're and you're locked and loaded and you're ready to learn and you and you're wanting to see what it's like to build business credit and you want to know what business coaching is, I want you to say hear you. All right. Let's do. Thank you very much for the congratulations. Um, Brian says congratulations. Thank you for the congratulations. Keith says congratulations. Thank you for that. Um, Lynette says congrats. Thank you for that. Lynette also says hear you. Thank you for your participating. Um, and also, if you're watching this on the replay, like I said, I want you to participate as if you're watching live for two reasons. The first reason why is because 90 percent of all of my content comes from you. Whatever you guys want me to do, I share that type of content. I answer your questions. I create live videos based on what you guys leave in your comments. That's thing number one. Thing number two is I want you to. Um, oh, it's, it's let me see something right here. I think I know what's wrong with this thing. I think I know what's wrong. 
But the second reason why I want you guys to um, the second reason why I want you guys to participate on the replay is because I want you to make a mind muscle connection, because if you do some type of action as far as writing something down or or reciting something, it helps you to recall the information that you learn. That's the reason why um, most people, you know, the number one bestselling book of all time says to write the vision and make it plain so they that read it can run. Because what happens is that when you do the corresponding action of putting in some type of uh, movement, when you learn something, it allows you to recall it a lot more. So um, thank you guys so much for your participation. And I figured out what the issue is. So give me a second, guys, while I fix this issue. It's not going to freeze this time. God willing, it don't freeze. Please don't let it freeze like it did last time. <laughs> Okay, so we're back on the screen. I think I figured out what the issue is, so we're back. Now, somebody just gave me a super chat. Marcel gave me a super chat. So, Marcel, I appreciate you giving me the super chat. Normally, I would answer your questions. Whenever somebody gave a super chat, I answer your questions, but that's not what this is, Marcel. Okay? That's not what this is. I am going to give out consulting to my clients that are enrolled into DCFI online and you're going to look over my shoulder as I'm going to answer their questions. I, I don't want you to waste your money. So I'm going to try to answer your question fairly quickly. But um, no more super chats tonight. OK, guys, because that's not what this is. OK, I don't want you to waste your money. All right. This I am allowing you guys to look over our, my shoulder as I give out consulting, which is what I do every single Tuesday to my clients that I enrolled into DCFI online. So that's not what this is. So, but Marcel, to answer your question, it says, you just want to know that um, that you appreciate and you congratulate me. I wish you all the best. Thank you so very much for that, Marcel. I appreciate you tremendously, sir. I saw the super chat and I didn't even read it. I thought that you were asking me a question because normally that's what I do. And I didn't want you to waste your money. But thank you so much for sowing that seed into me, Marcel. I appreciate you tremendously, sir. So let me let's go ahead and get into this, guys. So like I said, I am going to allow you guys to look over my shoulder and I'm going to go into our live. Um, I'm going to go into our Facebook group so that you can kind of see what it is that we do. We do this live every single Tuesday. So we have a total of 58 people watching live and only 31 thumbs up. I know that's come on. I want everybody to hit that thumbs up button right now. And I want you to share this as well. OK, so I want you to hit the thumbs up button and I want you to share this. I want you to share this on Facebook. I want you to share this on Instagram. Like, Dean, how can you share this on Instagram? Do a screen record and at me on Instagram. 
and I want you to share this in a group text. So the reason why I want you to share this is because this lets YouTube know that you value the content. So don't I don't want you to just look at me. I want you to look upon me. I want you guys to participate along with me as well so that that way. We're going to allow you guys to participate with me and share this as well. OK, share this live and, and all of your Facebook groups. So let me know where you share this information. OK. All right. Thank you guys so much for your participation. Thank you guys so much for um, for rocking with me as well. All right. So I want you to share this and let me know where you share this as well, because I want to keep an eye out on this. So like I mentioned, guys, we're going to go into the private Facebook group. Now, this here is our, my private Facebook group. OK. Inside of DCFI Online, when you're enrolled into DCFI Online, which is my online course where we teach you how to build business credit that's 100% separate from your personal credit, inside um, inside the private Facebook group, we allow you guys to um, I answer your questions live. So this is what we do. Um, right now, we have a total of, let's see how many we have a total of. Um, we have um, 618 members that are currently active inside of our private Facebook group right now. These are all um, individuals that are like minded. They are all going towards the same journey and the same goal. And inside the private Facebook group, as you guys see right here, every single Tuesday. All right. Every single Tuesday, I drop a note. And in that note, I talk about, hey, this is what we're going to do. We're going to go live. So as you can see right here, group, it's a, hey, guys, I'm going live in 15 minutes, okay? <laughs> as you guys can see right here, I dropped this an hour ago. So we've had technical difficulties for over an hour, but it's all right. But um, I'm actually going to, this is a previous video that um, I did before. There are hours of content that you don't see, that you don't see anywhere but in our private Facebook group right here. All right. Now, as you can see right here, it says 5-19-2018. Once again, the reason why it says 5-19-2018 is because, like I said, last Tuesday, I announced my engagement to my beautiful fiance, overwhelmed. Um, I think we had over 100,000 um, views and a lot of stuff went viral. You know, that's one of the greatest benefits of being with a powerful woman, you know, being with a model, being with another entrepreneur. We are a power couple. And because of that, um, I got overwhelmed. <laughs> so I'm going to pick up where we left off and I'm going to answer your questions starting right here. OK, so I'm going to answer your questions starting right here now. Um, boom, 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 boom. I'm going to answer your questions starting right here. Now, this is what we do every single Tuesday. So if you want to know what it's like when we do the live consulting, this is what we do every single Tuesday. So let's look and see are the comments that we have. Let's look and see all the comments that we have. Give me one moment, guys. Boom, boom. I'm going to allow you guys to, we're going to go back and forth and I'm going to allow you guys to see this. Mm, 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 mm. And this is live, guys. So if you're like, what is this? This is live. This is live. So where are we on our comments? Boom. So we have a total of 40 comments today. So there are 40, um, 40 comments that we're going to do and I'm going to basically teach. So you guys are going to see what it's like for you, for um, me to teach um, live inside the private Facebook group. This is what we do every single Tuesday, guys. So let's go back here. Give me a second, guys. So. All right. Now. So this is what I do every single Tuesday in the private Facebook group. If you want to know what it's like, this is what it's like. Now, I'm allowing you guys to look over our shoulder because, like I said, we hit 15,000 subscribers. All right. So I know this was a bit of a longer intro, but, you know, it is what it is and it ain't what it ain't. This is live. All right. Now, I'm going to allow you guys to interact. You guys are going to see and I'm going to want your participation on this as well. So if you're watching this on the replay um, and he was like, well, hurry up and get to the point. Like I said, the entire video was the point. So um, let's go ahead and let's do a temperature check. Let's make sure that we are locked and loaded and that we're ready to go. So if you are ready, all right, if you guys are ready to go and you're ready to go, I want you to say ready to go. Three words. If you're ready to go, um, you've got to start that baseline of learning. This is a live lecture. So if you're ready to go, I want you to say ready to go. Even if you're watching this on the replay, like I said, I want you to interact with me as if you are watching live. If you're ready to go, I want you to say ready to go. 
All right, so Silver Ambitious says, ready to go. Thank you so much for participating. Um, Lynette Jones says, ready to go. Thank you for participating. Um, Natalie says, ready to go. Thank you for participating, Natalie. Baron says, I'm ready. Thank you for participating. Johnny says, ready. Thank you for participating. Um, Tachilla says, ready. Thank you for participating. Christopher says, he's ready. James says, he's ready. All right, Kelly says, he's ready. Janine says, um, they're ready. David says they're ready. I appreciate that. Roderick Sharp is in the building. Hey, Roderick. Roderick says he's ready. Okay, awesome. Trucker Juice is ready to go. Thank you so much for participating. Thank you guys so much for participating. So let's go back into this. So we're in our private Facebook group. Now, the way that we do this, like I said, we do this every single, every single Tuesday. All right. Every single Tuesday. We do this every Tuesday. So let's get to the first comment. So, um, all right, um, let's go over this. Boom, boom, let me find it. There we go. Boom. So the very first question is from, from Timothy. So Timothy says, I'm a brand new startup. How do I purchase real estate with business credit? And how long will it take, take me to do it, if, if possible? Second question. When trying to dispute credit items, do I freeze all third party reporting agencies first before I dispute online? Thanks. All right, Timothy, thank you so much for um, that's a very good question. So let's kind of go back here. I want to go back over this now. <clears throat> now, I have to do a disclaimer. OK, guys. So listen, I'm teaching in a public forum. Right. Because I'm teaching in a public forum, I have to use a lot of um, disclaimers. All right. Normally, when I teach, I'm a lot more provocative. I'm a lot more transparent when I teach in a private setting, which is what we do in our private Facebook group. So I need for you guys to make sure that you are with me 100 percent when I am teaching this. OK, because like I said, I have certain business um, credentials and I have certain licenses that I have to abide by. So it's very important for you guys to make sure that you are with me, even when you're watching on the replay. OK, I want you to make sure that you are with me now. So what Timothy just asked, he wants to know, can he buy business? Can he buy real estate using business credit? Yes, Timothy, you can. No matter of fact, I want to know, Tim, are you are you watching live? So, Tim, let me know if you're watching live right now. This is what I do. Like I said, when I want my clients, the private Facebook group, as you can see, it was a total of 40 questions. All right. So even though there are over. So even though there are over eleven hundred clients that are enrolled into the group. Um, and we have over uh, close to 700 active clients inside the private Facebook group. It's very it's very easy for you to get, you know, that consulting and that personal touch when you are enrolled into my course. If you participate. So, Tim, are you here? Let me know if you're Tim. Tim, if you hear, I want you to say I'm here. All right. Angie says, I'm so unpredictable. Thank you very much for that, Angie. I am glad that I am unpredictable to you. All right. All right, Tim, are you here? Now, Tim, you might not be here um, because, like I said, this is from last week, um, but I will be great if you are here. All right. I don't see that you say that you're here, Tim. So I'm just going to go ahead and get into it. All right. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and get into it. So the very first thing is. All right. <clears throat> so, Tim, the very first thing is this to answer your question. Let's go back to your question, Tim. All right, Tim. So to answer your question. You want to know. If um, oh, this is a different that was so this right here is a different live Q and A that I do. Like I said, God, there there's hours and hours of video that you you never see unless you're enrolled into the group. So let's go back to your question, Tim. There we go. So people are asking questions while we're live. So it's throwing off the <laughs> so because they're asking questions while they're live is is while we're live is throwing off the um the alignment. But that's all right. So um. Going back and forth with this. So, Tim, let's let me make sure I answer your question accurately. All right. So, Tim, once again, he wants to know, he says, I'm a brand new startup. How do I purchase real estate with business credit and how long will it take me to do it if possible? Second question is, when trying to dispute credit items, do I freeze all third party reporting? So these are three questions. All right. So let's. All right. So these are three questions, three questions. All right. Let's go. Three questions. So, all right, guys. So the very first thing is now. 
I want you guys, like I said, I want you to participate with me. All right. It's because the reason why I'm doing this is because a lot of times when I'm looking at the comments and people are calling the office and they'll say, well, Dean said this, Dean said that because I'm teaching in the public forum, I have to do this. All right. So first thing I want you to say business credit. So remember, I am talking about business credit. Now, I go back and forth between business credit and personal credit when I teach. So it's very important because the rules that apply for business credit are not the same rules that apply for personal credit. OK, so I want you guys to make sure that you're with me. I want you to say business credit. All right. Say that with me so that we can move forward. I want you to say business credit. All right. I'm getting into this right now. So I'm in my teaching mode. So thank you so much for participating. Thank you so much. So Baron says business credit. Thank you. Roderick says business credit. OK, thank you. So business credit. Thank you so much, Lynette. Business credit. So he's asking how to purchase real estate in his business name for a startup. So for a brand new startup, um, in order for you to purchase real estate in your business name, you're going to have to have an established business profile. Now, if you do a Google search and you talk about business credit now, because you're enrolled into the course, you have access to all of this. OK, so first thing is make sure that you follow the course step by step. So even though you're enrolled in the startup coaching, you have access to that and you have access to the um, 720 FICO coaching, which is the free course. Follow the course step by step. The reason why, Tim, is because in the course I teach you exactly what you need to do in order to have business credit. So I'm just going to give you the short and fast answer. In order for you to be able to purchase business credit, I mean, be able to purchase real estate in your business name, you need to have an established profile. What do I mean by that? You need to be in business for at least three months. So, yes, even though um, you're considered a startup. All right. If you have an established profile and you have a minimum of at least three months in business, you can qualify with some of the lenders that we have connections with. All right. So you've been in business for at least three months. But I'm about to say something that's somewhat of an oxymoron. Hear me out. In order for you for business credit, all right, this is business credit, not personal credit. We're talking about purchasing real estate and business credit. The minimum requirement is three months in business. At the same time, you're also going to have to have 10 um, payment experiences reporting to your Dun and Bradstreet profile. Now, I'm not going to teach what that is on this public forum, okay? Um, because you have that Tim, you have access to the private Facebook group and you have access to the course. So you already know that. Now, um, when I do another next time we go live, I'm actually going to take your calls. Now, the cool thing about this is, like I said, we hit 15,000 subscribers in like two weeks. So I'm, I was shocked. I was like, next time we go live, we hit another milestone. I'm going to actually take your calls live like I did the call in show. So then I can answer your questions live. But because I wasn't you know, ready for that? I'm just you guys are looking over my shoulder now, Tim. I'm not going to reteach what that is, but this is because I'm teaching in a public forum. I know that I have to be a little more detailed. So you need to have a total of 10 payment experiences reporting to your Dun and Bradstreet profile. All right. You also need to have um, on your Experian business. You need to have a total of six accounts reporting for Experian business. You need to have a total of ten thousand dollars reporting on your Dun and Bradstreet profile. And you also need to have seventy five hundred reporting for Experian business. All right. Once you do those things. All right. And you have to be, you know, have all the minimum requirements in order to get to that point. But, Tim, yes, you're able to do it. So even though what I have to say is oxymoronic, it takes three months for you to the minimum requirement. But to have those type of payment experiences, those 10 and those larger amounts. Nine times out of 10, you're looking at around six months in business in order to have that type of profile. Once you have that type of profile, then that's how you're able to begin to purchase real estate in your business name. If you're wanting to do it that way, going through some of my private lenders, that's the first answer. Second answer is you can just purchase real estate using a hard money lender and using a hard money lender um, or using cash, put it in your business name. When you put the property in your business name, you can put it in your business name in two ways. The first way is what you would say, oh, well, your name was Tim. Well, you would just say Tim Incorporated. So it could say Timothy Johnson. I'm just using that because I don't want to go back because it's going to mess me up out of my groove. So you can say Timothy Johnson, I-S-A-O-A, -A, Tim Incorporated. What that is, is you're purchasing the property, you're putting it temporarily in your name. 
However, when you sign on the dotted line on the quick claim, when you do your deed and when you do your paperwork, if you do your name and then do ISAOA, your business name, ISAOA is is an acronym, which means it's successors and or assigned. All right. So you do your first name, you do your do your name, ISAOA and your business name. What that allows you to do is if you were to purchase the property in your in your personal name, you can easily deed it over, do a quick claim deed into your business name so that that's going to alleviate a lot of the paperwork. That's going to alleviate a lot of a lot of the um, attorney's fees that you would have to pay in order to flip it to your business name. So there are multiple different scenarios that you can go through. So the first way is establishing yourself the proper way then you can just go straight with your business name. Second way is purchasing it in your personal name, but doing the paperwork the right way so that you can do what's called a quick claim. The the slang for it is quick claim, which is Q-U-I-C-K because a lot of people say it's very quick because it, it happens literally in 24 hours. But the technical term for it is a quit claim where you're doing a quit claim deed where you're deeding it over into your business name so that your business entity has controlling um, what's called vested interest in that property to do it that way. The second way is by putting it in your personal name, but doing an ISA away so that it can easily go into your business name. And the third way to do it is going with the hard money lender. Hard money lender, they don't care. The only thing they care about is the deal, if the deal is a good solid deal. Second thing that they care about is if you make your payments on time. So those are the top two ways. Those are the top three ways that you're able to do it as a startup. I hope I answered that, okay? That's the first thing. So if you guys got that, If you understand where I'm coming from, I want you to say got it. Two words, got it. Even if you're watching this on a replay, like I said, I want you to participate with me. I want you to say got it. All right. I know I gave out a lot. That's because I have 39 other questions I need to get to. Um, But because I'm teaching in a public forum, I have to be a lot. Not saying that I'm not detailed, but I, I, I have to be, you know, have to just make sure you dig what I'm saying, because listen, I ain't new to this. I'm true to this. And I'm having a phenomenal wedding that I'm so excited about that. I got to make sure we good to go. And I ain't going to let nobody come in and mess that up, including these people that say, well, Dean said it meant the devil is alive. Mm -mm." You see who my fiance is locking that down. She ain't getting away. (laughs) <laughs> so we need to hurry up and run to the altar. <laughs> I'm just joking. I'm just joking because I know she watching it. I'm just teasing because because I know she watching. But nevertheless, guys, all, all things about all things um, being equal. Okay, thank you for participating. Thank you. So you see the got it's the got it's the got it's okay. Thank you so much for participating. Thank you so much. So that's the answer to the first part of your question. Okay. So let's get to the second part of your question. All right. So let's get to the um, second part. All right. And the second part of your question was. Um, and like I said, guys, we do this every single Tuesday. All right. This is what we do on Tuesday. So if you want to say, well, Dean, do you really? Pro- yes, I provide consulting. If you position yourself for it, you guys see that the close to 700 people that are enrolled into the course. But tonight we're only answering 40 questions. OK, the reason why we're answering 40 questions is because. Well, 41, because somebody just asked another question is because these are the ones that are positioning themselves. The only person stopping you from being successful is you. All right. So the second part of your question is, hmm, it says, when trying to dispute credit items, do I need to um, freeze all third party reporting agencies? Then do your dispute online? So to answer that fairly quickly, yes, that is the best strategy to do that. Follow the steps inside the course. And in the the 725 Code Coaching, I show you how you're able to do a total credit freeze. That's the purpose for the total credit freeze, because it allows you to do that. All right. So that is Tim's question. So the second question is from Darnell. So Darnell says, you've been hearing that credit card companies are going to want PG effective the first month, May 11th, 2018. Under federal law, all personals, all persons applying for business credit must include their Social Security number um, of the officers of the company listed on the application or the application can be considered Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, the application can't be considered. I apologize. My eyes playing tricks on me. I know this is probably something that you want to do on YouTube, but um, can you shine some light on this? Yes. So let's let's talk about this a little bit more. Let's talk about this a little bit more. So I'm going to do a completely separate video talking about this. A lot of you guys have 
brought this to my attention and because you want to know um, you have questions about that. Let me explain something to y'all. This law has been a, in effect. If mem- ah, that's why I want to make sure I'm prepped for this. This is live, guys. I don't want to say the wrong date. I want to say 2014 is when this actually started. But because President Trump is done some new things with Dodd Frank, they're shining light on it and they're adding some things to it. So let me explain a couple of things to you. So the very first thing is this. All right. It's a miscalculated assumption. I want to make sure that you guys are with me on this. Okay, so let's make sure. Let me bring you guys back on this. All right. So it's a miscalculated assumption that when you provide your identification, this is a short and fast answer to this. It's a miscalculated assumption that when you provide your personal information, that you're doing a personal guarantee. They are two separate things. Hear me and hear me clearly. Ever since the Patriot Act, okay? Ever since the Patriot Act, this is a hybrid version of the Patriot Act. Ever since the Patriot Act, you have to disclose who you are when applying for certain lines of credit before credit card companies did not go into as much detail, but banks and lending institutions have always been that way. The credit card companies are starting to pick up on what the lending institutions have been doing for and I want to say 2014, but don't quote me on the exact year, guys. Like I said, it's, it's, it's live. And I, 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 I but nevertheless, this is not a personal guarantee. OK, hear me and hear me clearly. This is not a personal guarantee. This is to verify your identity. All right. Even though there are credit card, there are business credit card companies right now and there are credit unions right now. They require you to disclose who you are. They also require you to even disclose your credit score. However, they do not report to your personal credit. There are credit company, credit card companies that are out there. And in the executive coaching, I teach, I have, a, I have a, actually have a cheat sheet of the credit card companies that allow you to do that. Now, we are not taking any more clients in the executive coaching right now. That is our mentorship course that's designed specifically for mentorship and coaching do not ask us right now. It is not, we're, I can only give that hands on approach. You guys see there's 680 people that are enrolled into the startup coaching, the executive coaching. I can show you guys that group. That's a secret group. That's a completely separate group. I think we're 18 people in that because I, I can only it's not for open en- enrollment. I just leave it at that. So here what I have to say. In the executive coaching, when it does become available to general open public, when you, if you guys get access to it, you will have a cheat sheet. There's a cheat sheet of companies that will they what they'll do is they need to see that you have at least a 680 or 620 score, but they do not report to your personal credit. OK, so just because they're wanting to know what your your who you are and they're wanting to know who which, you know, this is to prevent um, money laundering and to prevent criminal activity, that does not mean that they're going to attach it to your credit for a PG. Yes, they're going to, they, like for instance, you cannot go to a bank right now. You you got to go to any bank and you go to apply to, um, to, to get that, that um, account in your business name. They're going to know who you are because they want to one, make sure that you're not using a CPN or a secondary social. And then two, they want to make sure that you're not using it for any illegal activity. OK. So I'm going to do a completely separate teaching where I break down the entire historical development of this. But this is actually this has been around for years. You're still able to build business credit that's 100 percent separate from your personal credit. However, when it comes to credit card companies, they want to make sure that they verify your identity. Not all credit card companies are going to do a PG. PG stands for personal guarantee. But a lot of times when people want to know your personal information or your person for personal identification purposes, the main reason why is for the Patriot Act. Okay, but I'm going to break that down in a completely separate video that's dedicated. And that's going to be like a 15, 20 minute video because I'm I'm not going to be teaching live. 
I'm going to be going straight into the facts. OK, but if you guys understand that, OK, if you understand that personal information is separate from personal guarantee, if you understand, I want you to say understand. Even if you're watching this on the replay, like I said, I want you to make a mind muscle connection with this content. So if you understand this, I want you to say understand. All right. So personal guarantee is completely separate from personal information. If you understand, I want you to say understand. OK. All right. Roderick Sharp says understand. Thank you for the, for participating. Everlasting Glow. Dope name, by the way, um, says understand. Thank you for participating. Lynette says understand. Thank you for participating. Jamila Freeman gave the thumbs up and said um, she understands. Thank you so much for participating. All right, guys. Thank you guys so much for participating. Right now, we have a total of 98 people that are watching live. All 98 of you guys, I want you to hit the thumbs up button right now. We only have 48 thumbs up. The devil is alive. We don't do them games. We don't. I don't have. I don't have 50 percent of you guys that are hating on me. The devil is alive. The cost of admission for this free business consulting and this free business coaching is your participation. It's going to cost you one way or the other. Either it's going to cost you to be enrolled or it's going to cost you to participate. We not. I'm not new to this. I'm true to this. I don't do this for play. I do this for pay. What do you mean? Like I said, if you're valuing the content. I want you to hit that share button. And as you guys can see, I'm looking at my analytics. Like I said, I'm not new to this. I'm true to this. I'm a CEO in real life. I don't just play one on TV. I just came from VidCon. All right. I do, I do this for real. So that being said, I want you to let YouTube know you value this. Even if you're watching this on the replay, hit that share button right now. And I want you to hit that thumbs up button, hit that like button right now. We OK, we just jump up to 63. Thank you guys so much. So we jumped from 45 to 63. I want everybody to hit that like button right now. We have 94 people that are watching live and we only have 68 thumbs up and we only have 45 shares out of 94 people that are watching live. We only have 45 shares. That's not good enough. I, I want you guys to share this, share the wealth, share this on um, Facebook, share this on Twitter, share this in a group chat, hit the, the share button. It's right next to the thumbs up button. It's two is the thumbs up button, thumbs down button and share. Hit that share button. Boom. After you hit the share button, then what you do, copy the link, paste it in a group text or copy the link and drop it in a Facebook group or hit the Twitter button. I just want you to share the information. All right. We have 73 people that are um, giving me the thumbs up. Thank you. 76 people. Thank you guys so much for that. So let's jump back into this. Thank you guys so much for the participation. Thank you guys so much for valuing the content. Thank you for um, for, for um, playing your part in paying. OK, so I hope that answered your question, Darnell. And I'm going to do a completely separate teaching on that. That's going to be a, um, a pre-recorded video. And I'm just going to teach on that separately because a lot of people have been asking that question. All right. So the next question is by Ebony. Ebony says, can you do a dispute online with the major credit bureaus, even if you have a credit repair company already disputing items on your credit report? I want to upload a police report for identity theft. I was affected by the Equifax breach. OK, Ebony, that's a very good question. So um, let me go back on screen for that. That's a very good question, Ebony. Very, very good question. So. So. Now we're talking about personal credit. All right. So now I want you to say personal credit. All right. I need you to participate with me. I want to make sure that you guys are with me because what I teach on business credit is completely separate from personal credit. So now to make sure that your eyes are peeled and that you are making this mind muscle connection, I want you to say personal credit. All right. Personal credit. I want you to say personal credit. We're doing this temperature check. Make sure you guys are with me. This is a live lecture. Like I said, this is unlike anything you've ever seen before. This is a live lecture. Okay. This is a live lecture. Bear with me for one moment, guys. This is a live lecture. Live lecture. All right. Hold on for a second, guys. Boom. All right. This is a live lecture. So we live. OK, so. Um, I want you to say personal credit. OK, we're talking about personal credit, personal credit. So the young lady, Ebony, wants to know. Um, can she still dispute items even though she's going through a credit repair company? So the first thing is um, I really don't like credit repair companies, which is why I have the free course where I teach you how to repair your credit for free. OK, because majority of the credit repair companies, these are people, these are not all, but majority of them are jack leg individuals that I'm read a book somewhere. Not all. They're jack leg individuals that I read a book somewhere. They run around half cocked with half information. 
Majority of the time, in order for you to legally be a credit repair company, you have to be a law firm and or a nonprofit organization. Those are the only companies that I would recommend. That's the reason why. And there's not many companies that I recommend, which is why I teach it for free. And I give it to you for free. All right. Now, I um, did. I mean, there's a lot of things going on. You know, excuses are lies that disguise themselves as the truth that are designed to keep you stuck in mediocrity. I'm saying this to myself because I'm about to give you guys an excuse. (laughs) The excuse is why I have not completed that free course and made it available to everybody. Everybody that's enrolled into the um, DCFI online, they already have the free course. But I said that I was going to do a smaller version, a less comprehensive version to everybody. The, The reasons why I haven't done it is because, as you guys, if you watched my last live where I did this, I got to deal with people who take my intellectual property and use it for evil. Um, And then also because of VidCon and I knew that I was going to propose and all this other stuff was going on. I just kept pushing it back and pushing it back. Um, And I apologize for that. But excuses are lies that disguise themselves as a truth. So I could have done it. But the fact of the matter is I chose not to do it. So that way I take the excuse out of the way (laughs) and just said I just chose not to do it. (laughs) Nevertheless, To answer your question, Ebony, yes, you are able to. The most only company I suggest, I mean, that you might have is Lexington Law. Um, I don't know who you have, but yes, you're able to do anything you want to do on your own credit. Nine times out of 10, if it is a law firm or a nonprofit organization, they would have you to sign over um, a, a power of attorney or a power of attorney. That's the only legal way someone can dispute on your behalf. If they don't dispute on your behalf behalf by you doing a power of attorney, then they're illegally doing it. Just just straight up, up, straight up and down. You know what I'm saying? That's just the facts of life. You dig what I'm saying? It just is what it is. So nevertheless. um, But yes, you're able to do anything because this this is your credit. All right. Now. All right. Now they are disputing as if they're you. So if if a quote unquote company, credit repair company disputes on your behalf, they're disputing as if they're you. So the credit companies don't know, you know, Equifax, TransUnion and Experian, they don't know that it's not you. They assume that it's you unless the person is going the legal way of using a power of attorney. Most of the time they don't just just being straight up, straight up and honest with you. Most of the time they don't. And the reason I come, I know this is because I'll be talking to clients and they'll say, Dean, I give you my password. No, I don't want. No, you ain't giving me your password. No, I don't want your password. No, 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 no. I nope, don't. I don't do that. Dean, I got, I give you my pet. Nope, we ain't doing them. We're not playing them games. No, I am not acting as if I'm you because I do not have a power of attorney on file. No. In the executive coaching, when we do corporate build outs, we do that. But if I'm just doing a regular one on one consultation with you, or if I'm just giving you a free 15 minute consultation that you get when you're in executive coaching, we're not doing that. We ain't doing, unless you're doing a corporate build out and I have a, 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 a um, power of attorney on file, I ain't logging into none of your nothing. The, no, the devil is a lie. Like I said, I'm not new to this. I'm true to this. And if you're watching this for the first time and you don't under and you don't know, I've been in banking and finance for close to two decades. I started when I was 18 years old. So, I mean, I, I like I said, I'm not just some person that read a book somewhere. You know, I've been in banking and finance, worked for banking institutions ever since I was 18. You dig what I'm saying? So that being said, I've seen a lot of my friends get locked up for foolishness. I've seen a lot of people lose their licenses for foolishness. I have a a friend of mine. um, I won't say his real name. I say his his we call him spider. He actually has a spider tattoo right here. He made close to seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars. He can't make it no more. Not no more because he's trying to help people. And then you help the wrong person and not doing anything wrong, but just helping the wrong person and they're being ungrateful or they get he end up getting in trouble because he did not conduct himself the right way. Even though the person is fine, you know what I'm saying? And he didn't do anything to harm the person. He still, you know, messed himself up. I ain't going to get into all of that. What made me think about that is when I did the announcement for my engagement, he hit me up and we was catching up and all the other stuff. So that's why that was fresh on my mind. But you know, he landed on his feet at the same time. He can't be in banking and finance anymore, which is why I don't do what, which is why I am not in a heartbeat. I'll be like, no, no, thank you. I don't want your business. No, <laughs> you understand it. No, it ain't worth it. <laughs> but so nevertheless, I said all that to say this. So people say all the time, well, Dean, 
you know, here's my password information. If I'm doing a consultation, I'm like, nope, we can do a, a video share where I can look at your computer and or you can send it over to me. But like I said, unless a power of attorney on file, I'm not logging in your information. I'm not doing that. So that's the first thing. The second thing is, once again, to answer your question, this is a very long, drawn out way for me to answer your question, um, is that. Yes, you're able to do any and everything you want to do on your credit because the majority of the time, the person that's doing the credit repair, they're acting as if they're you. And if they're doing it the right way and they have a power of attorney on file, then it's fine. But majority of the time when Equifax, TransUnion, and Experian sees a company doing it for you, in actuality, they are really logging in as they're you and they're really doing it. All right, so let's do somewhat of a temperature check. If you've experienced this, okay, now because I'm teaching live, Let's see if you have dealt with a guru or credit repair person. And let's just be honest. Let's tell the truth and shame the devil. And they ask for your username and password for credit karma or they ask for your username and password for credit check total. Or if they ask for your username and password for um, Equifax or TransUnion, if, if that's you, I want you to say they asked. All right. And if you if, if they ask for it, I want you to say they asked. Let's do a temperature check. And I want you to be transparent with me, though. This is an opportunity for me to teach. So I want you to say they asked. If um, they asked, I want you to say they asked. Thank you so much for participating. All right. Right now, we have a total of 100 people watching live. We have a total of 82 thumbs up and we have a total of 60 shares. So let's get that shares up, guys. If you're watching this, I want all 100 of you guys to hit that share button. It's right next to that thumbs up button. There are 82 people that hit the thumbs up button. All 82 of you guys also hit the share button. Share it. Share it, copy it, send it to a friend, share it or share and paste it on Facebook or paste it in your private Facebook groups. I want you guys to share this information, share the wealth. All right. So let's go ahead and, and let's. Um, all right. Let's go ahead and um, let's look at this. All right. So. Um, so I so. ISO says, so true. Been there, done that. Thank you so much for participating. All right. One that says, yes, do it right. ISO says they asked. Reggie says they asked. Jamila um, says they asked with the big eyes. Yes. Um, um, Milton says they ask. A Brown says they asked. I didn't like it at all. It's absolutely no, 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 no. That's the first red flag. No, not at all. All right. Um, Everything Glow says shared. Thank you so much for um, sharing Everything Glow. All right. Um, Zaya Fox says they asked. Tony says they asked. Thank you so much for participating with me. Thank you guys so much for that. Yes. So if, they, if ever they ask, the only reason why they're asking is because they're acting as if they're you. All right. So technically, um, you know, that's that's wrong. If you are a company profiting off of it, you have to go through proper chain of got to go through the proper um, chain of, of of command. You have to have a power of attorney on file. I let, I'm just going to be 100 percent honest with you guys. OK, I'm just getting to you all the way straight. This one thing about me, I'm. I'm going to get you all the way straight. I have clients that have family members that are incarcerated. OK, people who have the A1 perfect credit incarcerated and they have them as business partners. They get a, a lot of money, a lot of funding. But I make sure that they go down on visiting day, make sure that they, they do a power of attorney and make sure that a notary is with them on visiting day. You understand what I'm saying? To make sure that all our T's are crossed and I's are dotted just because you're incarcerated doesn't mean that you cannot still build business credit that's separate from your personal credit. It doesn't mean that you get still not able to hold a business. It doesn't mean that you're not able to be a multimillionaire. Listen, there's so many multimillionaires in jail right now don't make no sense. I'm just saying 100 percent what it is. At the same time, if you're going to do it, you got to do it the right way. You're going to stack it. You got to stack it right. So, yeah. So you have to make sure that all your T's are crossed and your I's are dotted. Um, so to ask the long drawn out way to answer your question is that, yes, you are able to dispute yourself if you're going with the company. It's so nine times out of 10. They're just acting as if they're yourself and you're, you're 100 percent fine with that. No issues at all. But make sure I, my strong suggestion, because you're enrolled into my course. Stop dealing with that third party because they can't get the stuff done like you can get the stuff done. And a lot of them don't even know how to. I get so many of them trying to enroll into my course because they don't know. Like, think how are you able to do all the stuff that you're doing? Because they don't know about banking and finance. You know what I'm saying? They don't, they don't know. And I, and I don't mean to be arrogant. Please, Lord, don't let me come off as being arrogant. 
at the same time, you can do it yourself. Instead of paying somebody else to do a half a job and who can possibly mess up your information and sell your information. Come on, guys. I need for y'all to stay woke to sell your information or get stuff in your name. You can do it yourself. Don't be lazy. The only person stopping you from being successful is you. If you don't know it, you can learn it. And I'm teaching it to you. Position yourself so you can learn. Um, but nevertheless, my advice to you is stop dealing with that company because it's a waste of money because you're already rolling through the course and go through the 720 FICO step by step. Set up one on one consultations if you need to. And I'll help you make sure that you navigate yourself the way that you should navigate yourself. So let's go to the next question. Like I said, guys, this is going to be a long one tonight. I know it is, guys. It's going to be a long one tonight. Ooh. All right. Let's go to it. Let's go to the next one. All right. All right. So the next question is from um, Stefan says, after a, bur- after a bankruptcy, where is the best place to start building personal credit? Stefan, that's a very good question. All right, Stefan, I'm going to answer your question for that fairly quickly. So, Stefan, inside the 720 FICO coaching, there is a section that says guaranteed lines of credit. There's a total of of, um, five companies that are going to give you a total of seventeen thousand dollars. These are not trade lines, Stefan. These are legitimate companies. They just have been pre-selected. They report to all three credit bureaus. Um, They are designed to help improve your credit score. Okay. So in that section, in the 725 code coaching, which you have access to, you're going to see a list of all five of those companies that's going to total $17,000. A lot of people will tell you to get a secured credit card. Worst thing you can do is get a secured credit card. They don't know what they're talking about. That's going to hinder you. So, Stefan, go into the startup, go into the 725 code coaching, which you have access to, um, which is the free course. And in that, you're going to see this section. Now, if you say, well, Dean, I'm not there yet. Well, then slow down, finish the course and get there and you'll be able to see that. All right. So Makita says, um, Makita says, is it better to apply for for a credit limit increase online or over the phone? Are you available for a 15 minute um, funding consultation on Friday? Makita, yes. So Makita, now I got to I got to come back on screen for this. Okay, guys, I got to come back on screen for this. Okay, I got to come back on screen for this. One. All right, so I got to come back on screen for this one. Now, Marquita Maxi, as you can see, two things. One, Marquita Maxi is enrolled into my course and Marquita Maxi is a part of the executive coaching. OK, two things that's very important. OK, because <laughs> I want you guys to see this. All right. So I want you guys to understand this because I do not want y'all calling my office asking for no free 15 minute consultation. Unless you qualify, okay? So first thing is I want y'all to say he qualifies. Two words. He qualifies. Even if you're watching this on the replay, I want you to say he qualifies. I, as I, as you guys know, all of our calls are recorded for quality assurance, okay? Like I said, I'm not new to this. I'm true to this. All of our calls are recorded for quality assurance. I had someone argue one of my business consultants up and down for 15 minutes. It was like, Dean said that I can call and get a free 15 minute consultation. No, 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 no. You probably saw an old video. Okay. We have close to, I think we have close to like 200 videos on YouTube. So back when we first started doing things, I did give out free 15 minute consultations the clients enrolled into the course, not just any Tom, Dick and Harry that's that calls me from YouTube. OK, like I said, I'm a CEO in real life. I just don't play one on YouTube or on TV. I'm one in real life. There's a chain of command that you have to go to. You just can't call up the CEO of Coca-Cola. You just can't call up the CEO of Starbucks. I mean, what do you mean? You think you can just pick up the phone and call Grant Cordon like that? You think you can just pick up the phone and call Ty Lopez like that? That's not how that works. You think you can just call Dave Ramsey up on the phone, even though he has a segment that allows you to call in. There are certain things that you have to go through, certain protocols. So that being said, he qualifies. So Marquita Maxi qualifies because two things. One, he's already enrolled into DCFI online. And two, he is a part of the executive coaching. So when you're in the executive coaching, which is not open to the public right now, 
because of things like this. Marquita has a cell phone. Where is that cell phone? Where he can text me because he's a part of the executive coaching. And because he's a part of the executive coaching, he gets that 15 minute consultation. So he gets those for free. That he gets where he can come, so we can schedule it. Okay, that's only for people that are part of the executive coaching. Okay, as a matter of fact, even if you're watching this on the replay, I want you to say executive coaching. Okay, I don't want you guys calling the office and oh, I want my free consultation. No, I don't want you guys saying, well, oh, I'm enrolled into the course. No, there's only 15 people that are. Matter of fact, I'm going to show you guys. There's only 15 people that are in that mentorship group that are in that mentorship course that that qualifies for. Marquita happens to be one of them. And the reason why I'm explaining this in detail is because this is live. Normally, I wouldn't go into grave detail like this if when they in our private group because they already know. But for all the people that don't know, I want you to understand and say this is I want you to understand that this is the executive coaching specifically for the executive coaching. I'm about to show you guys right now. This is specifically for the mentorship group, okay? The executive coaching. So that you guys can see it's something that's completely separate, okay? All right, so you see this right here? I'm about to show you guys something, all right? So this is something completely separate. So you see right here, this is the executive. This is um, this is Dean, this is the executive lounge, okay? Now I know it's a little confusing. So the executive lounge, which is where all of the clients are okay. All of the clients right now are. Oh, shoot. I'm not about to make a post. <laughs> all of the clients right now are in the executive lounge. OK, the executive lounge is our private Facebook group for the clients that are enrolled into the startup coaching. And I probably need to change the title because this is confusing people. OK, just because you are in the executive lounge does not mean that you have access to the executive coaching. All right. So once again, I want to show you guys this right right now. We have a total of 618 members in the executive. Uh, I mean, in the startup coaching in this group. OK. All right. I want to show this to you guys just so you can know. All right. So in the mentorship group, the mentorship group is separate okay in the mentorship group guys i want to show you guys in the mentorship group that is completely separate this here is a secret group all right this is the mentorship group dcfi mentorship group see this is a secret group not a private group all right and look at the members that are in this one okay oh shoot the members that are in this one because i want to make sure you guys understand this because the members, we have 29 members, 29. All right. There's only 29 that are that are in that group. All right. So that is set aside specifically for mentorship. OK, so that is. And I, I just realized I know that some people are confused when we say executive coaching. And I know people are confused because the name of the group Um is the executive lounge, but the mentorship group, the mentorship group is something that is completely different, guys, okay? So the mentorship group is something that is completely different, all right? So let's go back to the um, executive lounge. And I know it's confusing, guys, so forgive me for that, all right? And I know that I wasn't, originally I wasn't going to do a, um, originally I wasn't going to do a mentorship. A lot of people were asking for mentorship and a, a lot of life coaching. And I was like, no, nah, I don't want to do it. I just want to focus on this. But the need was so great that I started to do it after I had already named this the executive lounge. OK, because. So. So forgive me for that, guys. So you guys understand that this. See, look, this is a closed group. See this. This here is a closed group which is completely separate from the secret group. The secret group, you have to be enrolled in the mentorship, which is the executive coaching, which is completely different. And I, I just as I realized this, I'm going to change the name of this to help um, to help um, with the confusion. I'm going to change the name of this. So you guys are watching me get this revelation live. <laughs> so this is the one that's open to all the clients that are enrolled into the course. But for the specific 
for to answer Makita's question because he is enrolled. He's part of those 20 people because he's part of the 29, the 20 people. He gets access to that. Okay. Because he's a part of that, he gets access to that. So to answer your question, so to answer your question, Makita, two things. Answer your question, um, is it better to do a, um, it actually depends on the time of the month versus whether you do it online or whether you do it um, over the phone. It actually depends on the time of the uh, month to ask for a credit line increase. That has a big, That plays a bigger role than over the phone. The first thing is you want to wait towards the end of the month. Let me go back on screen for this one. Let me go back on screen for this one, guys. So, Marquita, it's best. Oh, I'm doing, I got double things going. That was very unprofessional. All right, let me change this out. There we go. Boom. So, um, to answer your question, Marquita, the best time for you to do it in my opinion, based on how banking and finance works, is there are three things to consider. The first thing is you need to figure out which quarter you're in. First quarter, second quarter, third quarter, fourth quarter. There are four quarters of the year. Just like there are four quarters of football, there are four quarters to um, the um, financial um, industry, the financial world. There are four quarters. First quarter, second quarter, third quarter, fourth quarter. Every three months make a quarter. So first thing you have to figure out which quarter um, you're in. Which which is going to determine and how close you are to the end when you're when you're at the last month of the quarter towards the last two weeks of the month is the best time to ask for an increase because there's a lot of quotas that need to be met and there are a lot of um, commissions that I want to be earned. So that's the first thing. Second thing is to do it online versus over the phone. That's just doing it online versus over the phone is always best when you're dealing with credit card companies. Okay. When you're dealing with credit unions and you have your banker, you always want to go through your banker because your banker gets paid commission. So you want to go through your banker. So if you're doing something for a credit card company, so let's do a temperature check. Make sure you guys hear me clearly. First thing I want you to say is credit card company. Three words, credit card company, as in a credit card. They do not have a standalone bank. Credit cards are like Care Credit, Visa, Discover, Spark, Capital One. Even though Capital One does have a bank, but you guys know traditionally for well, the three things, I'll make sure that you guys are with me because I know people are going to say, well, Dean said, make sure I'm with you guys are with me, okay? So credit card company, okay? But, all right, thank you so much for participating. Let's, I want you guys to say three words, credit card company, all right? All right. Credit card company. Thank you so much for participating. All right. So to Chilla says CCC. I appreciate that. All right. Um, Mario Carwell says I need to be. Did I add you to the group? I know that you should. You're added to the group, Mario. I, I'm almost positive that you're added to the group, Mario. If not, make sure you call the office tomorrow. Hit option number two to speak with Zion to make sure that you are. But I'm pretty sure that you are. All right. Um. Trucking with Loshan Parks. What's going on, Lo? How you feeling, my man? Loshan is in the building. All right. Um, so Wanda says credit card company. Roland says credit card company. All right. Craig says CCC. Jamika says CCC. Tony says CCC. All right. Um, Walter says credit card company. Jermaine says credit card company. So, okay. So hear me. Credit card companies. These are people like like I said, Finger Hut or Discover, American Express, um, Visa. These are like um, care credit. You want to wait towards the end of the month, closest to the end of the quarter, and you want to do those online. All right. But if you are a lending institution like Bank of America, Wells Fargo, any credit union that you have a credit card with, but it's a lending institution, even though Capital One is the Capital One and Chase are the two um, exceptions. The reason why is because their primary focus is their um, credit cards. They have divisions that are designed specifically that they focus on credit cards, Capital One, as well as Chase. Whereas like Wells Fargo, Bank of America, um, TBE, uh, Fifth Third, um, 
BB&T, credit unions, all the credit unions, they they focus on relationships. So because of that, um, you're going to have a personal banker to go through your personal banker. The same two rules apply. The only difference is at the end of the month. Um, over the over the Internet is best for credit card companies. But if they're lending institutions that you have a credit card with, if you're a lending institution with a credit card with, you want to go through your personal banker. So if you understand that, I want you to say personal banker so that you understand lending institution is personal banker. And I want you guys to do the exact same thing on the replay. If you're watching this on the replay, like I said, I answer a lot of your questions. I have a list of videos that I'm going to be dropping every day that call quick questions. And I get those from you. When you guys ask a question on YouTube, I take that and I create a video out of it called quick questions. So for the longer, short, for the shorter, con- for the shorter content, the quick 15 minute, 10 minutes, it's because of you guys. I make those content. Those are going to start dropping every single day. But um, for the longer format, these live videos that we're going to be doing, we're going to continue to do them. I still want you guys to interact with me. All right. So I want you to, the reason why I want you guys to say this is because as an orator and as a teacher and as a professional, I have to make sure that number one bestselling book of all time says, and all of you are getting get understanding. And it's important that you guys understand so that you don't do the right thing for the wrong method. And then it comes back. Well, Dean said, no, 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 no. Dean did not say because it's documented that Dean said the right thing. But because people learn in different ways and sometimes they hear certain things and they say other stuff. And, you know, understand what I'm saying? This this helps cut down on the confusion. Okay. All right. So thank you guys so much for participating. All right. You guys understand. Okay, you got it. You got it. You got a personal banker. Thank you so much. So let's go to the next one. Let's go to the next question. Okay. thank you guys so much for that. Let's go to the next question. So. To answer your question, Makita, yes, we can schedule one on Friday. I have availability Friday. Um, And two, to answer the question is um, you want to do, depending on who, credit card company, online, if it's with the lending institutions, you want to do it through your personal banker over the phone. All right. But always, always towards the last two weeks of the month. Always, always um, at the end of the month, you have your best chance of getting that. Done. All right. So Dominique says, hey, Dean, please read this entirety. OK. Here we go, Dominique. You contact the customer service about this with no help or callback. I have been trying to purchase an authorized user trade line, but the issue is that I have completed the online ga- agreement, but with no further instructions or information on what to do next. This was about two weeks ago. I'm needing to do this ASAP. So, Dominique, a couple of things. So, first, thank you so much for your patience. And also, thank you so much for following up with customer service. All right. The second thing, Dominique, is make sure that your pop-up blockers are not on. I need to know, Dominique, are you doing this on your cell phone? Are you doing this on your tablet? Or are you doing this on your computer? Okay. Let me come back on screen for this. All right. Let me come back on screen for this, guys. So, Dominique is enrolled into the course. When you're enrolled into the course, you have access to trade lines. All right, we have reputable companies where you can purchase trade lines. However, notice what Dominique says. Dominique says that I signed the agreement. I'm not new to this. I'm true to this. Okay. Dominique said that they signed the agreement. Now, when you sign the agreement, it gives you access to a a private list of um, trade lines. But you have to make sure that your pop up blocker is not on. Okay, so if your pop up blocker is on, it's going to stop you from doing that. So. um, You said that you call the office. Um, Who can I help walk you through this? Because you've already did the agreement. I want you to redo it again, but make sure that your pop up blocker is off. And I need to make sure that. Um. If you're doing on your cell phone, if you're doing on your computer. So I need to know that, um, Dominique, so that I can try to figure out what the issue is. But basically what happens is that once you go through and you sign the the agreement, um, the consultation agreement that allows you to purchase trade lines through us um, using a third party, then a pop up allows you to go to that 
that secret page where you can see the updated list of trade lines. But you have to make sure that your pop-up blocker is is off so that that doesn't happen. So I'm conf I'm curious to know. I have to see if I can go back and listen to those tapes to see what what support said to you. I'm curious to know what they said to you. But all right, let's go back and answer the question. So I did I did read that question in its entirety, and you said you need to do this ASAP. So I'll make sure that um, Malik calls you tomorrow. I, I'll have Malik walk you through that, and I'll make sure he calls you tomorrow, Dominique. All right, let's go back to next question. Next question is Ronnie. Ronnie says, should I start a holding company for a real estate business? Yes, Ronnie. In my personal opinion, I think that you should because um, that is the best way for you to um, uh, put um, assets in your business name without it um, affecting your personal credit. That's my personal opinion. So, Ronnie, that's what I suggest. I personally suggest that you do that. And so, Brandon says, how long after you've been incorporated for it? How long after you've been incorporated for a year before you can begin to get loans for equipment such as trucks, trailers, etc.? What are the main steps that has to be followed? Okay, Brandon. Oof. All right, let me come back on screen for this. All right. All right, guys. So um, to answer your question, Brandon, you asked how long do you need to be incorporated? All right. So the first thing is if you're wanting to get a lease, there's certain companies out there that only require you to be incorporated for one day. As long as you have the right requirements and you're incorporated for one day, then you're able to get a, a corporate lease in your business name. However, I want you guys to hear this. OK, this is very important. All right. And I want you guys to hear this. The shorter the, 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 the newer the business, the more down payment you have. The older the business, the more established the business, the lower down payment you have. If you've been in business for six months, there's a, you've been in business for six months and you've been operating for six months. There are ways where you can get 100 percent financing for a truck. Just 100 percent. You're 100 percent up and down. There are ways where you can get 100 percent financing for a truck if you have been in business for six months or greater. All right. There are strategies. There's a, it's a two step strategy that allows you to actually get approved for working capital and you use that working capital as your down payment. But if you can be day one, you can be day one. I have a lender that will allow you to get a Wraith, a Rolls Royce Wraith with a brand new business in your business name. But <clears throat> but you have to put down 30 percent. You can get a Rose Royce, you can get a Lamborghini, you can get a Lamborghini Gallardo, you can get a, yeah, a Lamborghini Murcia Largo, you can get a, a Peter, Peterbilt, you can get a Freightliner, you can get a Cascadia, you can get anything. One day incorporated, business lease in your business name, but they're going to want 30% down. Or if you establish your business the right way, and you want to know what the steps are, are the things that I teach in the course. You're going to need to make sure that you do have your business. <clears throat> you're going to make sure that you have your EIN and make sure that your EIN is not attached to a sole proprietor. Make sure that you are actually incorporated either with a INC, S Corp, C Corp or a LLC. You cannot be, I repeat, with the people that, I, that I'm talking about, you cannot be a sole proprietor and get these corporate leases or this or this equipment financing. You cannot do that being a sole proprietor. You have to be either an LLC, an INC, an S Corp or a C Corp. Those are the only ways you're able to do that. OK. All right. So that's the first thing. So to make sure that we're doing a temperature check, guys, because I, I want to make sure you guys got me. Even if you're watching us on the replay, I want you to participate with me. I want you to say um, no sole proprietor. Just say no soul prop. N-O-S-O-L-E-P-R-O-P. -O -O so you make sure that you understand this. No soul prop. A lot of times people say, or this, this is another thing that confuses a lot of people. 
they call a DBA. What they'll say is, well, I'm not a sole proprietor. I just have a DBA. It's the exact same thing as a sole proprietor. If you have a DBA, it's the exact same thing as a sole proprietor. So no sole prop, no DBA. I want you to participate with me, okay? I want you guys to participate with me as if, even if you're watching this on the replay, okay? I want you to participate with me as if you are watching me live, all right? We have a total of 94 people watching and 92 thumbs up. Thank you guys so much for allowing those thumbs up to match the people that are watching live. I appreciate you tremendously. 94 thumbs up, 92 um, people watching live, but we only have 75 shares. Let's get to 100 shares on this video. We have had over 100 people watching live. Right now, we have a total of 94. That share button is, is three buttons away from the thumbs up button. Let me show you. See right here? All right. You see right here? The share button. Hit that share button right there. Hit that share button, okay? I want you guys to hit the share button, all right? The share button, three buttons away. We have a total of 94 people that are watching live, and we have a total of um, 96 thumbs up now. 96 thumbs up. 97 people watching live, 96 thumbs up, and now we have 80 shares. So I want all of you guys that have not shared, hit that share button right now, okay? Hit that share button right now. Thank you so much for participating. So, all right. Um, so no soul prop. Thank you so much for participating. Um, Roderick says no soul prop. Um Trishila Hughes says KSP no show prop. All right. Um, all right. Um, A Brown says no soul prop. No Novell Palm says no soul prop. Mark says no soul prop. Thank you for participating. Angela Herod says no soul prop. Mr. Lewin says no soul prop. Thank you so much for participating for that. Amundo gave the thumbs up. I appreciate that. No soul prop. Thank you so much for that, Tony. I appreciate you for that. No soul prop. So, so to answer your question, the first thing is that you cannot be a soul prop. I think I messed my um, screen up when I did that. I think I messed my screen up. Let me see something real quick. Yep, I messed my screen up when I did that. Uh, it looks so whited out now. Hold on for a second. There we go. So now I'm back. I had to fix the the, the autofocus when I did that. <laughs> I messed it up. And guys, this is live, okay? This is live, okay? This is a live lecture. This is not polished. <laughs> this is live, all right? So um, nevertheless, um, so the first thing is, so remember, so a couple of things to answer your question. The newer the business, the higher the down payment. The older the business, the lower the down payment. When you get to the six month mark, and you have income coming in and you are producing and you're set up the right way, you can do what's called a two step or combo deal where you can actually get working capital and use that working capital as the 10 percent that's needed to put down for your equipment. So it's just like 100 percent financing. OK, and then you go into 12 months and 24 months and 48 months, however old the older the business, the easier it is for you to get funding. So that's the first part of the question. Second part of the question, you didn't ask this, but I hear it in the spirit of your question. The best place for you to get financing or funding for equipment when you are established past the six month mark is a lending institution and a credit card company. I mean, that credit card company, a lending institution and a credit union. That is going to be hands down the best way to get funding and financing. Hands down the best way. That's the, first, that's the best way. Second way, the easiest way is with in-house financing with trucking companies or equipment companies that do their own in-house financing. Um, and most of them do not report to the credit bureaus. OK, most of them don't report to the credit bureaus, but it's the easiest way. They don't care. All they want you to do is make your payment. They don't care. They don't care at all. Can you make your payment? OK, let's go ahead and let's, let's put you in this. Let's put you in this beauty. OK, the second easiest way. The third easiest way to do it is through a lease company that has either a dollar. OK, low. All right, low. I just got your message. I hit you up, low. I hit you up um, tomorrow. 
I hit you up first thing tomorrow, Lo. So, um, I lost my train of thought. Lo Sean, I'm going to hit you up first thing tomorrow when I go to the gym. Let's get back to it. Lease company, boom. The best way for you to do it is with a, is a, um, a dollar buyout where at the end of your lease term, you buy it out for a dollar. So those are the, those are the best options from that I suggest with the companies who I have relationships with. That's what I suggest for a startup company. So first thing, remember, the newer the company, the newer the company, and remember company, not a DBA or not a sole prop, the newer the company, the larger the down payment. If, if you got the money, go for it. If you got it and you got a good business strategy, go for it. That's first thing. Second thing is once you hit the six month mark and you are a legitimate business, meaning that you are set up the right way and you are already running your nail salon or you're running your landscaping business or you're running your nursing company and you need equipment because this isn't just for trucks. If you need office space, if you need, I mean, office, office equipment, you can you can lease anything in your business name. That's separate from your personal credit and get financing. You can equipment that's considered equipment. Computers are considered equipment. Um, furniture is considered equipment. Lights, software is all considered equipment, not just trucks. But if you are set up the proper way and you're in your business for six months and you have income coming in, you can do a combo deal where you have working capital and use that working capital and then pay for it. I know I'm repeating myself. And then the third way is straight up credit union. I mean, you know, credit union or lending. All right. So let's go ahead and get back to the questions. OK. Let's get back to the questions. All right. All right. Let's get back to the questions. All right. And once again, guys, like I said this is just a behind the scenes of what we do every single Tuesday. Every Tuesday, this is what we do. All right. Let's go to the next question. All right. Um, All right. So Quita says, when will you start enrolling for the executive coaching again? I have one month left in the startup coaching. Also, I got my 80 paydex and approved with Sunbelt for 15,000 and Supply Works for 1,000. Congratulations, Kita. Um, I will let you know once we um, open up for more um, company, once we open up for more people to allow them to um, enroll. But right now we don't have it open. Once it does become available, we will definitely let you know. And congratulations for your success. That's phenomenal. All right, so Charles says, I have the 80 paydex. But now says I only have four trade lines showing DMB. Um, all right, let me reread this. Charles says I have an 80 paydex, but now says I only have four trade lines showing up three to Dun and Bradstreet with a high limit of 350. I have been working with at least six or seven vendors. What would be the best course of action? I'm on tier two funding, but haven't applied for any yet because of the guidelines with the amount of trade lines reporting and high limits reporting. All right. So Scott says, I do not have my paydex score, but I am also wondering the same. Is there a way I can add trade lines that I have been working with Dun and Bradstreet without buying the credit builder package? I have at least seven different trade lines that I have done business with since February. And and so I'm wondering why my payday score is not yet established. All right, so let me um, answer both of those questions. Come back with me. Answer both of these questions. Okay? All right. So, guys, this is the primary reason why I strongly suggest that you go through the course because in tier one, I have a list of 15 different companies. And all 15 of those companies report to the credit bureaus. Not all companies have to report for business purposes. All right. So let's do a temperature check. Make sure you guys are with me so you guys understand what I'm saying. So now we're talking about business credit. Okay. 
But if you're with me, all right, if you're with me, even if you're watching this on the replay, if you're with me and you're right here with me, I want you to say business credit, okay? So I want you to say business credit, all right? I need you guys to participate with me because now I'm talking about business credit. Everybody knows personal credit is a lot easier. 90% of companies and 90% of individuals who you do business with, meaning current, you know, you get credit with on the personal side, they report. However, consequently, only 40% of businesses on the business side report for business credit. So remember, I want you guys to participate with me. Business credit, okay? Thank you so much for participating. Business credit, okay, guys? Business credit. Business credit. Business credit. Thank you so much for participating. All right. Um, Jermaine says business credit. Thank you for participating. Jamika says BC for business credit. Thank you for participating. Novell Palm, thank you for participating. Kenneth, thank you for participating. Craig, thank you for participating. So on business credit, okay? That's the reason why I strongly suggest if you're wanting to build business credit that's separate from your personal credit to go through the course and go through it step by step. So in order for you to have the companies, because not all companies report, that's the first thing. All right. The second thing is the mistake that most people make is that they will apply and they will turn around and pay it right back off. Now, I don't really want to teach this live, but I I am. I'm going to teach it live. Most people, when they get business credit, they're so excited that they got business credit. So let's say we're going into the month of July. July 1st comes around. They get approved. They say, oh, I just got approved. Let me order something for 30 bucks. Order something for 30 bucks. As soon as it comes in the mail, boom, they turn around and pay it. It won't one, two. There are two reasons why it will not report. Let's see if some of my students that are watching live. I want you to tell me why are the two reasons that scenario will not report. So all of my students that are watching live that have gone through the course and you know this. Why would someone that purchases something the first week of July for thirty dollars not have it show up on their credit profile? What are the top two reasons why? Let's go ahead and see my students that are watching me live. Let's see. What are the top two reasons why? Let's see my students that are watching me live. Do I have students? I see Roderick Sharp is a client of mine, is a student of mine. Let's see. All right. So Craig says not a full 30 days. That's correct. That's one reason why not a full 30 days. That's one. That's very good, Craig. What's the other reason why? So there are two reasons why. And the scenario is someone gets a new line of credit, a new credit account. They purchase something for 30 bucks. And as soon as it comes which is like the second, the first week of July, as soon as they order it, they turn around and pay it. What are the two reasons why that will not report? So Craig is correct. Um, It says um, not a full 30 days. And Mark right behind him says it is not over $60. Um, Jamika says got to be $50 and pay three weeks later. Absolutely. That is the exact answer, Jamika. I want you guys to give tap that thumbs up button for Jamika right now, because that's the perfect answer. I want you guys to tap that thumbs up button for Jamika Right now, if you're watching this on the replay, even if you're watching this on um, Facebook and you're watching on the replay, I want you to tap the heart. I tap the thumbs up button for Jamika five times. If you are watching this on YouTube and you're watching on the replay, I want you to give Jamika five thumbs up emojis. And if you're watching live right now, I want you to give Jamika five thumbs up emojis because that's the exact perfect answer. Give her five. Thank you so much, Lynette, for the two for the one thumb up emoji. We need four more because the five. Thank you for the five. Craig is the first person to get five. Reggie's the first person to get five. Thank you for participating. I want to see tap those five thumbs up emojis for her. So you see this, Jamika, that this is for you, um, young lady. Um, Angela, giving her the five thumbs up emojis. Alvina, Alvina is giving the five thumbs up emojis. Thank you so much for participating. So, yes. Yeah, so that is the exact reason why. So the m- majority of the time when I come across clients or come across people who have been doing business um, with companies and it's not reporting to Dun & Bradstreet, the three reasons why is one, the company doesn't report in the first place. Do business with people that do report. That's the first thing. In the course, in the startup coaching, I give you a list of 15 companies that all report. Remember, all you need a total is five. Yes, there are some people say, oh, you need four. But listen, we're talking about funding. We're not talking about just getting the 80 paydecks. 
because I'm going to teach you how to get to tier two and tier three. But having them little four accounts with the 80 pay decks is cool when you don't really know anything. But when we're talking about 150,000, 250,000, five hundred thousand dollars in business credit when we're talking about fifty thousand dollars in 60 seconds in business credit you're going to have to have an established profile and that's what i teach so you're going to have to have a total of five payment experiences and in the course i give you a list of 15 that's the first thing second thing is that they purchase something for under fifty dollars they get something like twenty dollars twenty five dollars or fifteen dollars just to get their feet wet and you're wasting time meaning that you're wasting a, a billing cycle. You want to get something that's over $50. The idea is that the item needs to be over $50. $60 is cool too, but over $50. Shipping and handling is above that $50. So you're going into that $60 mark. That's cool. That it needs to be over $50. And the best time to purchase, like Jamika said, is the third week of the month because it crosses over into another calendar month and it, and it um, forces the reporting software to report as a payment experience instead of a cash experience. So um, that's the answer to that question. So, so the first thing is that's the primary reason why some things might not be reporting is because uh, I don't know until I would have to see your full profile. But that's what it sounds like to me is that um, that's the first thing. And then the second thing is um, what Scott Davies said is that if you want to get the credit builder package, you can. I don't think it's worth it to get the credit builder package personally, but that's the only way that you can make a company report that does not automatically report. So that's the best way to answer that question. So um, Alvina says, hey, Dean, I've frozen all of my third party reporting agencies and currently have sent off two letters from the course to the credit bureaus. They still are refusing to delete some um, accounts, three collections accounts and one medical bill. But the agencies are. Right, let's go. Let's let's look at this. Read more. Let's see. Let's see. What she said. Let's see. What this say. All right. Let's make sure. Let me read this a little slower. Let me slow this one down. Hey, Dean. Hey, Dean. <laughs> I have frozen all of my third party reporting agencies and currently have sent off my two letters. I guess your your second round of letters, I, I think that's what you mean from the course. I guess your second round letter. OK. To the credit bureaus, they still are refusing to delete some accounts, three collection and one medical. But the collection agencies have sent me itemized letters. They do not provide proper validation of debt. Should I attach and send off these letters that the collection agencies have sent me to the credit bureaus? If so, which format or, word or wording would you recommend I use? Thank you so much for your help. All right, Alvina, let's go back to the screen for this. One. All right. So. All right, guys. So what Alvina is talking about for you guys that are not enrolled into my course, there's a section in my course where in the 725 Code Coaching, which is a free course, I talk about how you're able to, to do use the 609 Act. The 609 Act allows you to remove items off your credit report based on companies not reporting the proper way. So um, basically, Alvina, if you look at the section that's called dispute and discuss in the dispute and discuss section, you have a copy of the three letters. So you sent out the first letter, you sent out the second letter. Now you're on your third letter. OK. And on that third letter, Alvina, the proper legal jargon is right there. All you have to do is copy and paste it. Now, I'm not going to teach that live. For the purposes of now making sure that people because sometimes people take half information. But if you look, Alvina, on the third letter, all right, that you have access to copy and paste it. And the only thing you need to do is copy that legal jargon. Basically, it goes along the lines of acknowledging that you received an itemization. However, the itemization does not provide validation of the debt. And according to. 609 Act and the legal jargon that you have access to in the template requires you to remove this item in <clears throat> remove this remove these items so that you are not um, subject to lit litigation. You know you have all of that. The proper legal jargon is in this is in the letter. Okay, you have that. Look at the template. All you have to do is copy it and paste it. Just add your account numbers. Okay, and add every one of them the the proper way. And then you need to send that over 
to the um, to the credit to the creditor to the collection agency, and then also send in your proof of the thirty days in which. Remember, every time you send off those letters, you have to send them certified send receipt so that you have proof that they have that. Once you send that with the proof that they have that, and then you show that they've had it for thirty days, then you need to send that. So there are two. So there are two things you have to do. The first thing is send it to the the collection agencies, the creditor, right? After you send that to the creditor, then you collect your proof that they did not meet their criteria for the, for the um, FDCRA, the Fair Debt Collections Reporting Act. Since they did not meet that, now you have to get your information together and then send that to Equifax, TransUnion, and Experian so that they are not in violation of the um, FDCRA, the Fair Debt Collections Reporting Act, because they did not, because the creditor did not follow the, the laws, then you have to send that to them. Make sure your paper trail is tight. Make sure your T's are crossed and the I's are dotted. And in the section called Dispute and Discuss, I break it all the way down, watch the video multiple times, copy and paste the verbiage to send to them, and then gather up your proof, and then you send it to the credit bureaus and then that will they will remove it. No questions asked because you've gone through the proper channels because you've done everything. They will remove it. OK, so that's the best way for me to answer that question. OK, so let's go back into let's go back to the next question. OK, I know this is a long one tonight, guys. So um, let's do a temperature check. All right. I know that this is a long one, but if you are enjoying this, if you if you like this information and you're enjoying this, I want you to um, I want you to tell me if you like this. I want you to tell me. Tell me right now if you like this information, if you love this. I know this is long. It's boring to a lot of people, but it's it's valuable to to the others. So if you like this. All right. Alvina says, OK. Gotcha. Thank you so much. You're very, very welcome for that, Alvina. All right. Um, all right. So Everlasting Glow says, love it. Thank you so much for that. So if you love it, let me know you love it. If it's boring, let me know if it's boring. If it's too long, let me know if it's too long. Let me know what you guys think. But um, I know some people love it and some people think it's um, boring, but you no, know, it is what it is. Everything after everybody. Let me know while I get to this next question. All right. So David says you like it and it's helpful. All right. A Brown says very helpful. All right. Novi says, love it. Love, love, love. Thank you so much for that. Libra Toy says, love, love, love. All right. May says, love it. May says, love, love, love it. Okay. Thank you. I'm, I'm glad that you value, value what it is that we do. All right. So the next question is from Eval. Eval says, hey, Dean, I'm ready for that funding. I called to set up a 15 minute consultation with you last week. When can we um, wrap it up? We have a lot to converse about. Questions from the one hour consultation we were supposed to have. Okay, Evol. So once again, guys, Evol qualifies because Evol is part of the 20 that's in the executive coaching. So Evol, I'm just not getting back. I just got back from Cali, like I said. Um, I have consultation scheduled for tomorrow. Tomorrow is Wednesday. Today is Tuesday. Um, Evol, let's set up that hour consultation on Thursday. Um, so, Eval, I am going to make sure. Let me know, Eval, what time I'm going to make myself available for you because we did some shuffling around. So I'm going to make myself available for you, Eval. Let me give me three times that works for you. I'm going to have um, Patricia call you tomorrow to, to let me know the three times that work for best for you. And I'm going to do the best of my ability to fit into your schedule in those three times, Eval. But congratulations. I know we do have a lot to catch up on and I apologize for that. And once again, this is because Evol is a part of the 20 in the executive coaching. OK. All right. So Rosa says, hey, Mr. Dean, new to the group. Awesome. I'm waiting for someone to get back with me to help me with my website. OK, Rolls, if you need help with your website, I want you to reach out to Zion. Let me tag her so that she knows. Hold on for a second. I want you to reach out to Zion. So, Rose, I want you to call the office tomorrow and I want you to hit option number two. And I want you to um, ask to get Zion 
to help you with that. Let me go ahead and see and see if I can add Zion on here. Zion Walker, she is um, custom support. I messed up that needs, but it's okay. You know what I mean. You know what I'm saying? It's late. I'm doing using technology. <laughs> where is that? Come on, where you at? Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Where you at? Where you at? Where you at? This is live, guys. Where are you at? Come on. If you guys can see the other side of this and like, Dean, how come you just can't type it? Because it's like a, uh, it's so small on the um on the window, I can't even get it. So you got you got what I'm saying. I can't type it. And y'all already know I can't spell to save my life anyway. Come on, come on, get to it. Come on now. Just congratulations. It won't let me do it. It won't let me get to it. All right, so basically, come on now. Guys, this is live. Thank you for your patience, but this is live. Oh, come on. Computer, don't freeze up on me now. There we go. I finally got to the needs. <laughs> if you guys can see the other part of my screen. There we go. If you all can see the other part of my screen, this, to see this, this is so funny because it's like magnified times 20. It is so, so funny. Right, so Charles, um, so Clarissa says, can I use a 609 letter and the third party credit for, um, freeze to get early to get early warning deleted? I don't know what that means. What's early warning? I don't I don't know what that means, Clarissa. Help me to understand what early warning is. I, I don't know what that is. So forgive me for that. I don't, I don't know what that is. Uh, that's something that I've never heard of. And if I'm a credit specialist and I'm a um, credit expert. I've never heard of early warning before. So help me to understand what that is. If you're watching me live right now, tell me where early warning is. All right. T-shirt help desk. You wanted to know what do I use? Yes, I use OBS. Um, T-shirt help desk. I use OBS. Um, as my software. And I appreciate you. I'm glad that you like my professionalism. I use OBS with like three different screens and all of this other good stuff and a very fancy high tech um, laptop <laughs> um, that allows me to do that. Thank you very much for that. All right. So our right, next question is Will says, congratulations, my guy. Can I get on your schedule this week for a 15 minute consultation? Once again, because Will is in the coaching. Yes. All right, guys, so I don't want to beat a dead horse, but yes, because Will is in there. So, yes, Will. Um, Will, we are going to have to call the office tomorrow. Call the office tomorrow, Will. I, like I said, I'm having to catch up, guys, because like I mentioned, that's why he said congratulations, because I had just announced my engagement last week. So it was a lot going on, and I'm having to play catch up. On top of the engagement, I just came back from L.A. from Viacon. So, yes, Will. Let's get on the schedule. Um, I'm looking. I have availability only for Thursday and Friday. Today is Tuesday. Wednesday is, is jacked up. It's already booked up. I'm going to make myself available um, Thursday and Friday. So I have availability. So let so call the office. Speak to Patricia to confirm the time for that. All right. Dijon says, can I go over the I'll update quiz? Normally, if I was in our private setting, um, Dijon, I, I would do that. But so because I am broadcasting live on YouTube, I will not tonight, but specifically because I see you and two other people ask that question tomorrow. I'm going to go. Pri I'm going to go into the private question. The, uh, I'm going to go into the private um, group and I'm only going to do the live q and I'm not going to answer any questions, but I'm going to specifically for you, Dewan. I'm going to do 
or Dijon, I'm going to do um, go over that. So that's going to be a quick live five minute video just to go over those questions, maybe 15 minutes because it's 15 questions. So I'm going to do that tomorrow. So thank you for your patience for that. But I can't do that because I'm, I'm teaching in a live setting. All right. So Lynette says. Mm -mm. So Lynette says. I went and applied for financing for a new used vehicle and was denied because they showed me a fraud alert on my profile, but no phone number to call. This was news to me. Should I get a copy of this and take it to the police dep department? Yes. And file a report? Yes. And use it to get the stuff removed? Absolutely. 100%. Yes, yes, yes. Also, this is the same day I went to another dealership and got a car and they did not mention this at all. Yes, Lynette. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And let me come on screen for this, guys. OK, this is very, very important. So let me come on screen for this, guys. Absolutely. Positively. Listen, if you feel that your credit has been um, subject and 90 percent of the population has to been subject to identity theft or have been um been open to hacks and have been um, put out in ways that um, make you uncomfortable. You know, if you feel as if someone has stolen your identity, yes, you need to go file a police report. And yes, you need to use that the that for your ability to get items removed that are not yours. Go back to a previous video that I taught about that. Everything understood doesn't need to be said. All right, so let's go back. <laughs> let's go back to the private Facebook group on that one, okay? So yes, to answer your question, yes, 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 and yes, 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 and yes, 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 and yes. All right, yes, 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 and yes. All right, let's go to the next one. And guys, we do this every single Tuesday. Every single Tuesday we do this, but I'm sharing this with you guys because we hit. 15,000 subscribers because of your participation. That's the reason why I'm sharing this with you guys, because we hit that mark of 15,000 subscribers. OK, so right now we have 102 thumbs up and we have 89 shares. So thank you guys so much for hitting the share button. And thank you guys so much for hitting the thumbs up button. All 102 of you guys, make sure you hit that share button as well. Share it. Share it on Facebook. Share it in a group chat. Share it. Um. Sex it to your baby daddy, to your baby mama, to your best friend, to just share it. Hit the share button and then also share it on Twitter. Share it. Let YouTube know that you value this information. So hit that share button. All right. Who's the next person to ask a question? I'm almost done, guys. All right. Um, so Clara says. Any update on the federal student loan repayment plan will be available once I get that handled, it will be free. What? It will free me up tremendously. Thank you very much, um, Sharla, for your patience. Yes, ma'am. Um, that's That was part of the program that I was talking about that I just did not finish up on because I was dealing with the I was dealing with the hacker. Not I won't say hackers. I was dealing with the thieves, people thieving information and that relationship with that um, company is very important to me. So I'm trying my hardest to weed out all the all the crooks and wannabes and pretend to bees to try to get that taken care of. So thank you for your patience. And once I feel that we've gotten that taken care of and then I will I will definitely share that. So thank you so much for your for your patience. And if you need to do a one on one with me, you can schedule a one on one with me. If you, you want to get the information a lot sooner, schedule a one on one consultation, meaning that you pay for it, because I know, Charlotte, that you are newer and you're not in the executive coaching, but if you want to schedule a one on one consultation, you you're definitely able to do so. All right. So Makita says, can you refinance your car multiple times? And should I wait until after applying for more business credit? So Marquita, to ask your question, yes, you can refinance your car multiple times. If there are a lender that will allow you to do it and it makes sense, they will. Yes, you're able to do it. And should you wait to after you apply for business credit? Marquita, that's going to depend on where you are. I know that you have close to over 100,000 in business credit that's reporting right now. So right now for you, Makita, uh, my strongest advice is if it feels good for you to do it, then do it. Go for it. 
you've already met certain criteria and thresholds. So, yes, go for it. Um, and then if you want to put that in your business name, you should sell it to yourself and, uh, and do an ISAOA, um, assign it. So that way you can um, convert it over completely, pay off that loan and your personal name and then create a loan in your business name. All right, Marquita. And we can talk about that more on Friday when because we have that one on one consultation. All right. Um, so Lynette says, I just bought a new vehicle. How many payments should I make before I refinance to get a better interest rate? I also need a, uh, a second vehicle for my daughter. What's the best way to, to um, get both? All right. Libra says, great question. I need to know as well. I'm in the process of that. OK, well, Lynette. My biggest um, advice is I want you to wait for six months. I want you to wait for not just six months. I want you to wait two quarters specifically. So make sure that you're into the second quarter of you getting your vehicle. That's my strongest advice um, so that you can refinance at that time and get a better deal. I want you to wait six months, which is two quarters, but not just six months on the calendar. Look in when you got your loan how it feel, how it falls on the financial calendar, and then go after your two quarters in, two, two quarters in. Second thing for your daughter, that's a loaded question. Is your daughter doing a lot of driving? Does she need something brand new or does she just need to get around? If she needs something brand new, then you're going to, you're looking into an issue with your debt to income ratio and you might want to lease something because you want to make sure she's in the best thing. Or if she just needs to get around from point A to point B, find something that you can purchase cash or purchase with a credit card that you could turn around and pay off. That's a loaded question. To answer that effectively, we need I need more information to be able to do one on one. Best thing I suggest is next time I allow you guys to call in to the show, call in with that question because then we can have some back and forth dialogue or schedule a one-on-one -on -one consultation with me to be able to answer that question. That's a very good question. And that's a, that's a, that's a bit loaded question. All right. So, um, Leela says, I have my business name already, but should I change it to a general name so that loan companies or vendors do not know what my actual business is and just place the name of what my actual business is as a DBA? Leela, my suggestion is, um, it depends on what your business is. So if it's a product, see, that's a loaded question too, Leela. I would need more information. I can't say for you to change your business name unless I know what your current business name is. And also I would need to know what your industry is, because if your business name is a product and you're selling a product, then you don't want to change it. But if you're in a high risk industry, then you do want to change it. But you don't want to have a doing business as I don't suggest that you'd have a DBA especially if you're a brand new startup. It doesn't make sense. That's only if you're purchasing a franchise. Like for instance, let me get on. Um, I don't want to get on screen because then I'm going to have to get back to the questions. Like for instance, Rick Ross. Rick Ross, what he does is he owns a gang of checkers. Um, he owns a gang of um, a gang of wing stops. He owns a gang of Taco Bells. But his holding company owns them. And his holding company has a doing business as. That's when you want to do a DBA. I don't suggest any other purposes to do a DBA. That's the only way I suggest to do a DBA is if you are purchasing a franchise. That's my honest opinion as a consultant. All right. So um, Libra says, uh, obtaining your LLC step by step. I'm in. You're in Cali and you need some clarification. Can I obtain my LLC in another state and use a registered agent? I wasn't sure about that part. And how would that work with my virtual office? Sorry, I just couldn't wrap my head with this one. Laugh out loud. Thanks and congrats. Thank you very much, Libra. So to answer your question, yes, your virtual office and everything that you do needs to be in the state that you are incorporated in. So, yes, you can incorporate in another state. Your virtual office, everything needs to be in the state that you are doing business as. If you want to have a foreign LLC is what it's called or foreign corporation. To answer your question. Yes, everything needs to be in that state. Um, and then you need to have a separate location in the state that you're in right now. Um, that's the best way I can describe that. All right. So does MSC currently report? Um, the last time I checked, you know, companies change up all the time. 
Um, I was told that they did. I was told that they report every quarter. Then I was told that they don't report anymore. The last time I got notified is that they do report, but they report once every three months. That's what I was told, um, Lanell. The next question is, I found some small local businesses that offer office space and virtual office. Is there a simple way to check whether or not they will be red flagged? Lanell, that's a very good question. Yes, the best way for you to do it is to put the address in Google Maps. Search it in Google and see if it has ever shown up as a post office and see if it has ever shown up as a P.O. box. Um, those are the only two ways because some small companies, they if they if they they once were a virtual office or not virtual office, they once were a P.O. box or they once were a post office that converted over. If they don't show up as the, the history that they used to be, then you're fine to go to now. Very good question. All right. So Judeen says, uh oh. Look at Libra styling with all her dresses on. I see you, Libra. I see you doing your thing, girl. All right. So um, Judine says, is a website domain ending with online considered a professional website? Number two, what is the best strategy to use business credit to invest in properties? OK, so Judine, Juju, um, there's a section in the course where I show all of the different professional ones. So you want to be a dot com. You don't want to be a dot online. I'm just 100 percent honest with you. You do not want to be a dot online. You want to be a dot com or a dot net or a dot org. Those are the only three. If your business name doesn't if somebody else stole it, change it up. But you want to be a dot com. I suggest you be a dot com. I don't even want you to be a dot net or a dot org unless your organization dot com is the number one thing. All right. And number two, what is the best strategy to use business credit to invest in properties? The best way to do that, Juju, is by creating a holding company. Build up your holding company, build up your business credit in your holding company and then liquidate and leverage that for properties. That's the best way to answer that, Juju. So Libra says, and GoDaddy business phone number, a good number. Um, um the answer for that, Libra, is no. Um, in the course, Libra, you have access to Freedom Voice. Freedom Voice is the best option because they do report um, and they allow you to use all the functionalities and the first month is free. So my suggestion is go through Freedom Voice. I don't trust GoDaddy. I'm just being 100% honest with you. I have not seen how they do report if they report Time tested, the best source to use is Freedom Voice, which you have access to in the course. That's my best suggestion. All right, so um, Sherry says, hi Dean, can we be sued by a collection company for my account they bought? Is it a medical bill? You received a bunch of letters from attorneys wanting to represent us because they say, there's a public record that we're being sued. All right, Sherry. Um, yes, um, if they go through the proper channels to you do an attorney, because our company hires an attorney and can and we sue people. So to answer your question, yes, you can be. But at the same time, they have to go through the proper chain of title to validate that debt. If they don't validate that debt, then they are SOL. So make sure that they've gone through the proper chain of title. Just because you have a public record doesn't mean that um, they've gone through the proper chain of title. You have to make sure that they've gone through the proper chain of title, that they can validate that debt. All right. So John says a professional email quiz. I need help with this quiz. Thank you very much, Mr. Dean. All right, John, I am going to tag you on that um, live Q&A because we've done that live Q&A. The best thing I suggest you do, John. The best thing I suggest you do, John, is you go step by step, write the question down and write the answer down when you go over the quiz. And I'll make sure I tag you on that because we've done that one three times already, John. But like I said, tomorrow, somebody asked about the, um, the uh, update quiz. I'm going to do that one again over 
and I'm going to go through that one together. But for the email quiz, John, I know we've done that already three times. So I'll make sure that Zion tags you. If I don't tag you, I'll make sure Zion tags you on the proper one to go. All right. So Henry says. So Henry says, hello, Dean, I will schedule a consultation with you, sir. Thanks in advance. Long time listener. At first time, I'm reaching out to you. Appreciate you and your business model. Thank you very much for that, Henry. I really appreciate you. Mario Caldwell says, why would Capital One ask me for a business address verification? Mario, that's a very good question. The reason why they were asked is because the address that you have is not showing up in their um, in the underwriting um, engines, which is why I teach step by step. There's a section in the course, Mario, that says SEO for credit approvals. Go through that lesson, Mario, and make sure that you do every single step under that SEO for credit approvals, Mario, is very, very important. So the reason why they're asking for it is because for some reason there might be a letter or might be a unit number or might be a space that's separate from how it shows up in the AUS. And the AUS stands for the automatic underwriting engine. All right. Um, so Sherry says, I'm not working right now. So um, hire me to do something for your office. <laughs> Sherry, thank you so much for the offer, but that's a conflict of interest, Sherry. I'm not able to do that. All right. So Jermaine says, will having a registered agent require you to have a PG? Um, that's a very good question, um, Jermaine. No. Um, when you have a registered agent, it does not require you to have a PG. It just means that you're going to have to verify that you are the owner, making sure that your T's are crossing the I's and dotted, dotted with your articles of organization and your articles of incorporation. But no, just because you have a um, registered agent does not mean that you have to PG business credit. That's a very good question, Jermaine. All right, so Japito asks, he says, hi, Dean, what would be your best scenario in leveraging personal or business credit to increase credit? I would like to update our last convo in a 15 minute console at your earliest convenience, or could I pay for the hour? So, Chapito, yes, sir. If you want to schedule an hour one on one, you can schedule that hour. Or if you want to get in line for the 15 minute, you can. Once again, guys, Chapito is in the mentorship group. So because Chapito is in the part, he's part of the 20. That is something he gets the free 15 minutes. But if you want to schedule the hour, if you if if the if the slots for the 15 minutes go, um, get filled, Chapito, um, and you want to schedule an hour, you can do that. But that is something that <clears throat> we will have to talk about in detail because of the way your business is set up. I can't talk about that publicly right now because I'm teaching live on YouTube. If I was teaching in the private Facebook group, then um, I would go into more detail. But because of that, I am because I'm teaching live. I um, I'm not going to go into that detail because of that. All right, guys. And on that note, I'm going to answer some of your questions. All right. So that's basically a behind the scenes of what it's like to be in the group. I'm going to go back into the private group and I'm going to answer the rest of the clients questions in the live Q&A. But we have been going for a very, very long time tonight, and I appreciate you guys so much for that. But at the same time, for all of you guys that are watching me live and that are participating, I'm going to answer your questions right now. So I know I said that um, I was just going to um, answer all the clients questions, but I'm going to answer five questions. OK, five of your questions live. So the way that we're going to do this is I want you guys to. Um, when I say right now, I'm going to pick a question and I'm going to answer it right now. But first, let's do a baseline. OK, so if you guys are ready now, when you ask a question live, if you ask a question and I need more information and you, I'm going to need you to be I'm going to need you to be sharp with it. And I'm going to need you to talk with me. OK, because a lot of times I don't like to ask questions live majority of the time because people that ask part of a question and not ask the full question. Like if you look in the private Facebook group, people ask their long detailed question so that I can answer them. But when we're doing live, a lot of times people ask bits and pieces, which is why if I do live, I have you guys call in, but it's too late for you guys to call in, meaning late in the day. But I'm going to answer 
five questions. So first, if you guys are ready to go, I want you to say ready to go. Three words, ready to go to make sure that your eyes are peeled and your mind is sharp. So if you ask a question and I choose you and I need more information, you'll be able to do it. So let's do a temperature check. If you guys are ready to go, I'm going to answer five questions live. OK, so the first you guys are with me and ready to go. I want you to say ready to go. If you guys are falling asleep by now <laughs> and you guys are falling asleep, this is why I want to make sure that you guys are with me because we've been going for a good minute now. So I want you guys to let me know if you're ready to go. Say ready to go. All right. All right. So um, Wade says you need a one on one for an hour. OK, Wade, if you need one on one for an hour, contact the office. So that you can schedule that one on one for an hour. So May says ready to go. All right. Hugh says ready to go. Cool Breeze Trucking says ready to go. Hey, Cool Breeze. I hadn't seen you in a minute. Thank you for participating. All right. Angela says ready to go. Tanya says ready to go. Tony says ready to go. All right. So. All right. I want you to ask your questions right now. So the first question I see right now is the first one I'm going to answer right now. Ask your question right now. All right. First question I see. All right. First question is by Andrea. Andrea says, I have a 1099 job for three years with no LLC. Can I still create a LLC and put it under it? Should I open the LLC in the state of New York City or can I open it in the next state? So, Andrea, very good question. So to answer your question, yes, you can start your LLC right now, um, create your LLC. And what you're going to do is once you create your LLC, what you're going to do is you're going to get your EIN number, a brand new one. OK, so even though you're 1099, you have a DBA and you're a sole proprietor. But what you're going to need to do, Andrea, is you're going to need to um, get a brand new EIN, create your LLC. Once you create your LLC and your EIN, whoever you're contracting with, you're going to give that information to them for tax purposes, and then you're going to create your business checking account. When they pay you, you're going to pay that money into your business checking account. And if you you New York City is a really cool state. And if you're doing everything in New York City, just do it in New York City there. I don't see a benefit for you doing it in another state. I would need more information to figure out what the benefit for you to do it in another state. But you can do everything in New York City and you can be good to go. And that's my suggestion. That's a very good answer. So that's question number. I'm asking five questions. That's question number one, question number four. All right. So if you got it, all right, if you guys got it, let's do another temperature check and baseline. I want you to say got it. All right. So that we can. So after we do the got, got it, we can get to the next one. If you, I want you to say. And even if you're watching on the replay, I want you to ask your question. Because like I said, I have a whole segment that's called quick questions where I'm going to pick out your question and do a video just to answer that question. OK, so got it. Got it. OK, good. Thank you for participating. Um, Hughes, um, Tr 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 Trachila. I just say Hughes. I just say Hughes. Hughes, thank you for participating. All right. Cool Breeze. Sam, thank you for participating. Tanya says thank you for participating. Um, Andre, Andre, not Andrea, but Andre Morris says, thank you. Got it. OK, awesome. Thank you so much for that. All right. Kenneth, um, got it. OK, thank you for participating. OK, so ask your question right now. So the next. So I'm answering five questions. So ask your question right now. The next question I see, I'm going to answer right now. Ask your question right now. All right. Um, so Trucker Jew says, what is the best way to switch my personal vehicle loan over to my business? I only use it for work and have a crazy interest rate. Thank you, sir. That's Trucker underscore Juice. So um, the best way for you to do it is, um, first of all, if you want to um, finance it under your business name, you would need to make sure that you um, have business credit. Just because you have a business, if you don't have business credit um, and your business credit isn't strong enough to handle it, then you won't be able to just get it in your business name. You can sell it to your business because your business is a completely separate entity. Like, for instance, your child. Prime example. Say, for instance, you have an 18 year old child. Your 18 year old child have their own credit. They can buy your vehicle from you legally. 
The exact same thing with your business. Your business can purchase the vehicle from you if it has enough business credit to get it in your business name. So that's the first way to do it. So first, you have to make sure that you have enough business credit established. Now, now what I talked about before, um, brand new businesses, and when you're a brand new business, you can do a corporate lease. With the now, this is an underwriting guideline. It's very, very, very important. Okay, for the companies <clears throat> where, like I said, you can get a Rafe in your business name, you can get a Lamborghini in your business name, a Benz, and all the other stuff in your business name. One of the underwriting criteria is that it has to be purchased from a dealer that is a reputable dealer, not an individual. So, so for the individuals wanting to purchase Rafes and and Lamborghinis and BMW and Benzes using your business credit and you qualify, you have to make sure that you're purchasing from a legitimate dealership, not from any Tom, Dick or Harry. You yourself is considered a Tom, Dick or Harry if you are selling it from your individual self into your business. OK, so that's the first thing. So if you're just wanting to refinance and if you have a crazy interest rate, my, depending on how your business is structured and how your business is set up, I suggest that you work on restoring and repairing your personal credit and building up your business credit at the same time. Focus real hard for three months. And at the end of three months, depending on how you're structured, how old your business is, if you qualify, then you can go ahead and purchase it by selling it to yourself through your business. If you can go through a credit union, that's the best way to do it. If your business is structured the right way and you're able to purchase it from yourself, you can purchase it from yourself in your business name through a, a lending institution, a credit union. That's the best way. Second way that's in your business name. But if your business credit is established enough, build up your personal credit and then refinance it through a credit union. So they have the personal side and they have the business side. That's the best way to answer that. OK, so that's the that's the third one. I'm answering three more questions. So if you guys got it, let's do a temperature check. Temperature check. If you got it, I want you to say got it. If you got it, I want you to say got it. All right. So I'm about to do a temperature check again. So I'm answering three more questions. OK, so if you guys are with me. All right. If you're with me, matter of fact. Instead of saying got it, I want you to say with me. All right. If you're with me, I want you to say with me, with me, with you. If you're with me, I want you to say with you. OK, I want you to say, let's do a temp. Let's do a baseline. OK, if you're with me, I want you to say with you. <clears throat> Let me get my good old alkaline water. My um, fiance put me onto this alkaline water. Thank you, babe. With you, okay, awesome, 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 awesome. With me, with me, with me. All right, awesome. All right, all right, with me. So, I'm going to answer the next question I see right now. All right, the next question I see right now, I'm going to answer that question. The next question I see right now. All right. So. Um, so Hugh says. Uh, if you have an LLC. And you have good money coming in into the business account, I don't have to decide right away on what type of company to open. Right. That is correct. So that is technically considered a holding company. That's technically considered a holding company. Um, what you want to do is you want to establish yourself. Make sure, like for instance, if your name is Trachilla Hughes or Trachilla Hughes, I would make my name, if I were you, I will make it Hughes and Company. Or I will make it Hughes Holding. Or I'll make it Hughes Enterprise. Something like that, something general. And then establish your business the proper way. Make sure that you are incorporated. Make sure that you are S corporation or C corporation, whatever it is. Open up your business checking account. Let the money come in and let it sit. So what you're doing is you're adding seasoning to your business. I have a book that I am going to release in 2019. Oh, I'm getting married in 2018. Oof. I have a book that I will be releasing in 2019. It's called Do Your Work and Mind Your Business. And in that book, I teach on how you're able to establish 
a business while having a successful career? Because most people, that's what they do. They work a nine to five and then they use six to 10 to build their business. And I teach in that book, it's called Do Your Work and Mind Your Business on how you're able to manage doing both. And in that strategy, that's the best thing for you to do. So I would suggest to make yourself Hughes Enterprise or Hughes Holding or Hughes and Company, something generic. You don't know what it is. Establish yourself, all the things that I teach to establish yourself and let the money go into the account. And you can use that to buy anything that you want to, as long as it's legal. All right. So the next question, that's three. So next two questions. So um, the next two question is, all right. So Wade says, what is a. So Wade asks, what is a B Corp? I don't know. I don't know if I'm not. I don't understand what you mean by that. What's well, a B Corp? I don't I don't know what that is. I, I don't know. I know an S Corp and I know a C Corp. I don't know what a B Corp is. There's something that I don't know. I don't know what a B Corp is. I never heard of a B Corporation. Um, all right, so Jermaine White says, do you recommend a financial institution to open a bank account? Yes. So Jermaine, my suggestion is any type of credit union. And I really, 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 really want to. And I think that I'm going to do this. I got to talk to um, my mentor. My mentor and I talked about this. All you need is 250000 liquid to, to open up a credit union. Let me double check something real quick. Let me double check something real quick, guys. I really want to create a black owned um, credit union. I really want to create my own credit union. I think it's 250. Let me double check. Three hundred thousand, or a hundred thousand per one million. What? Let me double check this. Hold on for a second, guys. Pro forma. Three hundred thousand or one hundred thousand per one million in projected assets during the first five years. The last time when I was doing my research with my mentor, it was two hundred and fifty thousand. Like I really want to I really want to start my own um, credit union. And I want to start. I want to start a black owned uh, for black owned businesses. A credit union you can only join if you're a black owned business. He and I was talking about this. Let's double check this. Three hundred thousand. The last time we checked, did they go up? They probably went up by 50,000. I wonder where the extra 50, but he and I, I had this, maybe he knew of uh, a way to do it because, I mean, I can, I got approved for a warehouse line. You know, I can do anything in real estate. I got approved for, which is why, you know, Jehovah blessed me with all this. We can do a warehouse line, but warehouse line is only for lending specifically for real estate. But I don't want, I want it to be like a credit union. But to answer your question, um, a credit union is the best way to go. And I really want to, I really, I really want to do a credit union. I really want to be the president of a credit union and I have it only for black owned businesses. Let's do a temperature check. If I were able to, 
if I were able to have a credit union that's FDIC insured um, and it was a credit union that only geared toward black owned businesses, would you um, would you join the credit union? If you would join, I want you to say I would. If you wouldn't join, I want you to say I wouldn't. I want to do a temperature check, even if you're watching this on the replay. And, and the funny thing about it that's so funny to me, I have a gang of trolls. They, they do not keep the same energy because I go live. You understand? I go live. I answer your phone calls. I go live. <laughs> so you know what I'm saying? But they never, ever, ever participate live. They always make come in the comments. Some people going to call me racist. Definitely call me racist because you don't understand black power. Some people going to call me um, narrow minded. Definitely do that because you don't understand black power. But make sure when you do make those comments, hit that thumbs down button before you leave now. Don't just don't just make the nasty comment. Got to give me the thumbs down, too, and then share it to all your other friends and tell them how stupid and dumb I am. Share it with them in your group chat. Share it with me in your racist um, Facebook groups. Share it and tell them to leave all the nasty comments. Tell tell me how dumb and stupid I am for wanting to create a black owned business credit. union. <laughs> but um. Um, getting the organization group um, because I mean I, I mean I have enough clients. I mean you only need the total of twenty members, but I think the cash money that was needed was two hundred and fifty thousand. The last time I double checked, but um, I gotta I gotta I gotta ask him again. I think it was only two hundred fifty thousand cash. I'm sorry, guys. I'm I'm going back and looking at our old information because I really, I really would love to to do that. I really, really would love to do that. Mm -mm -mm. Let me look at your comments, and let me just my mind is drifting. All right, so Al, um, Alvina says, hands down with the resounding yes. Okay, so um, Sydney um, or Savage Steven says, hello, hey, Savage, how are you doing? All right, so let's see. Um, Craig says it's 100K. Um, so um, Hughes says, should I change the name? Yeah, I think that's very good. Hughes changed this, like Hughes Holdings or TH Holdings. That's a very good, very good. But Kim says, yep. All right. Um, all right. Jermaine says, do it. All right. Um, Craig says, yep. <laughs> Jermaine says, sign me up now. All right, so um, Hugh says I would. Um, cool Breeze Trucker says I definitely would. Um, Framer says I would. I would. <laughs> Mario says heck yeah. Um, Ra um, Hunter says heck yeah. I would. Sure would. I would. I'm with you. You would. Yeah, I think I want to do that, guys. Um, Savage says, is it possible to get a large loans for over a hundred thousand dollars? Absolutely. People do it all the time, Savage. Yep, you're able to do it, <clears throat> but it depends on do you qualify. Yep, people get hundreds of thousand dollars all the time, but do you qualify for it? But guys, that's it. I want to um thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you guys so much for participating. If you're watching this and you've watched all the way to the end, thank you so much for your support. Make sure that you guys comment and make sure that you subscribe. Once again, my name is Edean Cole. I am the CEO of Dean Cole Financial, specialize in working capital, alternative finance and business credit development and make sure that you subscribe. If you watch all the way to the end and you find value in this, subscribe and hit the notification bell. So the next time I'm live, you can participate. And once again, guys, we hit a thousand in two weeks. That was phenomenal. We went from 14,000 to 15,000 in two weeks. 
I am so humbled. Thank you. That's because of all of your shares. There's a there's a method to the madness. That's the reason why I'm asking you to share, because you're letting YouTube know that you value this. So YouTube get behind it. And then the favor of Jehovah God adds to it. And that's how it works. So if you value this and you support me, share it, share it on Facebook, share it on Twitter, send it in a group chat. If you got 15 of your friends, share it, copy the link, share it, send it out. That lets YouTube know you value it. So they're going to push that. And I appreciate you guys so much. So the next time we go live like this, I'm going to be answering your calls. I'm going to be taking your calls live. So if you guys have never seen those shows before, they're always phenomenal. I'm answering your calls live on the air and I'm giving out free business coaching live on the air. So um, thank you guys so much for your support. Thank you guys so much. But I really want to look into that. I really want to start my own credit union because when you start a credit union, um, you can start a credit union. You only need like 20 people. You don't need a whole bunch. It's it's a lot more lenient than starting a bank. And even though I have the access to a warehouse line, the criteria with the warehouse line is only to lend towards um, real estate. And I don't want to just do that. I want to have a credit union to where people can have a business checking account, a personal checking account um, that's geared specifically towards the entrepreneur. I really want to do that. My mentor and I was talking about it. And then for him to just to write a check for $250,000 is easy for him to do it. But um, and for you guys to know who my mentor is, um, that's the gentleman who I, she was riding around with a check for, I think, with like $30,000. She was just riding around and put that check and I showed that. So I'll put a link in the description. And at the end of this video, there will be a link that will take you to that video. You can see. Matter of fact, in that same video, I talk about how we, you know, we got approved to do the warehouse line for real estate, which is how you guys are able to see me have, you know, a very beautiful um, executive home on the water. Um, all of that comes from comes, you know, comes from that because this is all in my business name. Um, everything you see, the majority is all in my business name. Um but nevertheless, guys, thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you so much for sharing. Listen, the only person stopping you from being successful is you. If you don't know it, learn it. If you have not met the person, meet them. If you do not have the character or the discipline, develop it. Stay woke. Go get them. Success is waiting for you.